Hey, it's Smoke Monster, and uh, welcome to a very special stream here. I've been gearing up for this for months now, hoping to uh, show off the IGS PGM arcade system to you. And so uh, let me just start off by introducing the system itself. Uh, this is what it is. Uh, it's often compared to the Neo Geo. I hope today that we're going to break that myth, though. This came out, uh, it's the IGS Poly Game Master, released by IGS in Taiwan in uh, 1997. And this thing is a little powerhouse. And as you can see, it's a really nice uh, console-like looking system. Uh, it takes game cartridges, which I have a few back there, and then I have a big box of them to uh, unbox for you. Uh, sent in by Tim, who's going to be my guest today. Tim is known as GC8 Tech Online, and he is the arcade tech from 1UP Arcade in Brisbane, Australia. And there he uh, oversees over 170 arcade cabinets. He restores and releases one cab per week, every single week. So he's a busy guy. He knows a lot, and uh, he's changed the way I've thought about a lot of things in uh, the arcade world, and uh, I've been getting lots of like gear recommendations from him, including a nice cheap power supply, which is what he puts in a lot of his cabs, and uh, things like that. But I'll bring Tim on in a little bit here. I just wanted to start off by showing off the PGM, and uh, let me grab a game. Uh, here's Dodonpachi Daiojo. And so you're talking cave games here. There's three of them that were actually released as a single big PCB that basically had uh, the PGM built into it with the game. Kind of like uh, there's a lot of Neo Geo games that came out as single board PCBs too. And then it had a custom BIOS. And so what they've done through the years is um, they've been able to just convert the ROMs from that into uh, cartridges. So I have three of those that I got from Sheep Nova, who sells on eBay. And I also got a PGM from Sheep. And uh, he sells them at really good deals, and my patrons uh, can message me for uh, Sheep's contact info if you want to buy. He'll sell it a little cheaper direct. But um, yeah, I've got four games. I have uh, Donanpachi Daiojo, Escaluda, Ketsui, and then uh, Oriental Legends Super Special Pink Label, which is a cool beat-em-up. And uh, fans of beat-em-ups are going to kind of like the PGM, because this thing, as I said, it's a monster when it comes to 2D graphics. And Tim's going to talk all about the hardware that's inside this thing. But if you thought the Neo Geo was powerful, the Neo, this thing could wipe the floor with the Neo Geo. I mean, this thing is a, it came out seven years after Neo Geo. So we're going to talk a lot about the differences mainly. And uh, that's how you load a game in. You just snap it in. I have done a little modifications to mine. I just put a stupid uh, LED on the bottom and in, uh, inside of it too because this is transparent so you can light it up like Christmas. So I've done that. And uh, let me just uh, power it on and show you what I mean by that. And uh, I have my home arcade system super gun here. And that's it. Now it's that that consoleizes it. So there's you know people like to do consoleization kind of stuff to uh, consoles like or to systems like the Neo Geo. You don't really have to consoleize anymore. You can do just a stereo mod to these kind of systems and plug a super gun in, and it's consoleized. It has uh, a super gun. Uh, if you don't know, it's a way to turn a arcade PCB, so an actual arcade game, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or whatever, anything that's JAMA, into a console. So you have your controller inputs. You have audio video output, and then you have a power input on the side, and so that's all you need. And um, you could use something like a Neo Geo DB15 controller. You can get Sega Saturn adapters for it, Genesis, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, you name it. You can plug anything into these now. And uh, I have it actually hooked up to a Saturn adapter there and a virtual stick here. But uh, before I start playing games, oh, let me show the... There's the LEDs I'm talking about. I mean, it's just a subtle effect, and I'm kind of an idiot, I know, but it, it looks cool. Um, this is a new, actually modified uh, Neo Geo Mini Controller by Magic Trashman, which has a clicky stick inside of it. Clicky uh, thumbstick buttons, and it's modified to DB15, so you can use it just like an old uh, Neo Geo controller. But before I do that, let me open my... Week my it's not the weekly beer, because I already had one. Uh, this is the Black Toad Dark Ale. Not the best beer in the world, but it's fine. And uh, while I'm opening this, let me dial up and plug Tim into the chat. So thank you to everybody who's uh, joined. Oh, hey, Furtech is here. Speaking of Neo Geo. And we did uh, set this up already, so hopefully it just plugs straight in. 
no funny stuff. Hey, Tim. Hey, hey. How are you doing? Ah, not too bad. Not too bad. Welcome uh, to the stream. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to pour a beer here. and uh, So it's like noon by you now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's um... And it's tomorrow already. <laughs> yeah, it's tomorrow. So I, I'm actually in the future, so I know what happened. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, it took some... Uh, strange logistics for us to work out like uh, what the times would be for, to get Tim on here. So Tim, why don't you introduce yourself? I kind of talked about what you do at uh, 1UP, but um, yeah, I, I should play that. Uh, I, I linked to a video actually in the comments of a walkthrough that your boss did of the arcade, which is gives people an idea of what we're talking about here. This is not just like 170 arcade cabs. These are like pristine, fully restored, beautiful cabs with, you know, perfect video and everything. And you've been, you recap every single one, the chassis and things like that too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Every, every chassis gets recapped. Um, it is, it is time consuming and you have to have a lot of caps on the shelf, um, to actually be able to recap, but, um, it's a, it's a necessary evil. And, um, I normally allow about a day for a, for a chassis recap. Um, I've got, oh, I don't know, it'd be probably maybe a thousand or a thousand and a half um, different sized caps and voltages at work. So um, that comes in handy. It means I can just grab a chassis out of a machine, recap it, put it back in, and you know everybody's happy. Yeah, you said you have like many, many thousands of dollars worth of caps on hand at any time, which is pretty oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Like, I, I, it's mm -hmm. it comes down to because everything's done in house. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to be able to like if yeah, if you a, can't just order a one by one like some people do. Yeah, no, I, I have to have them, and um, yeah, they're um, I'm actually due to do a stock take um, of them very very soon because obviously I go through a lot of them. Um, but yeah, it's it's necessary, and um, the results speak for themselves. I mean, some of these machines, it's. It's amazing they still keep going. I mean, you can service them, you can replace parts, you can do all that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, the boards, the tubes, the chassis, they're all 20 to 30 years old. And they weren't they weren't really designed to run that long. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very, um, very challenging job. Um, most people that come in, they just think I play arcade games all day and that's it. That's all my job entails, <laughs> <laughs> which is a common misconception. But, um, yeah. Yeah. You get to play with a lot of capacitors and things, right? Oh yeah, well that's that's the thing, you know. Like it's 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 all um, it's all go. Like um, I've got to, as you said in the intro, um, I think you said in the intro how I do. We release one game every week, an extra game, mm -hmm. so that has to be prepped, and I've only got four days to do it. And I mean, you can if if you take out one day for recapping, that's crazy. Maybe a, d a day for rewiring the cab. Um, you know, and then you've got final testing. See, there's three days already. So, um, yeah, it's very time consuming. Um, but I really do love it. I mean, I've been, I've been working on arcade stuff now for, you know, like 20, 30 years now. So, um, I've been doing it for a very long time and I'm very passionate about it and, uh, very lucky that, you know, I can, um, you know, that I've got a job where I can use all the information that I know, uh, from all the work that I've done and and enjoy it you know a lot of people don't have jobs they enjoy so um i i think it's pretty lucky so um yeah yeah and that's awesome that your boss uh like you told me the other day he's very adamant about putting a crt back into each uh you know if the game had a crt monitor or the cab has a crt monitor and uh i think that's pretty cool because some arcades now are going like all lcd which is kind of sad for older games but uh, it sounds like you guys have and I mean, the other thing is, you if you go to a lot of arcades like I do, it's kind of actually kind of depressing, and barcades especially. I mean, you'll see, you, you, occasionally you'll come across kind of a place that might have five or ten nice machines that are well kept, but the majority are burned out. There's no attention to detail. You know, parts are obviously needing to be fixed on them. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really want to make a trip to One Up one day. It looks like heaven on earth to me when I look at the yeah, walkthrough. Yeah. The thing about LCDs, um, you know, the boss has always said, he said, if we had to replace any CRTs with LCDs, he said that would be it. That would be the end of it. He wouldn't, you know, close down and, and not do it. But um, That's awesome. 
it's it's getting hard to get tubes. Um, the other problem is there was a couple of Chinese manufacturers making tubes, but the um, the internals of the tubes isn't very high quality. So the tubes are only lasting like one or two years and that's it. So you can't even, to find replacement tubes is very, very difficult. Um, they generally have to be, um, you know, out of another machine or, or people that, you know, have got a couple of machines and they've done LCD conversions, etc. But it is quite hard to get tubes. Tubes is, is probably the hardest thing. Um, but we do have a tube rejuvenator or a tube zapper, as we like to call it at work. And um, it allows for, for tubes that don't work very well to, to have a little bit more life. Um, so that's a, that's a very important thing as well. But yes, we're all original. All the boards are original. There's no emulation. There's no 60 in ones. They're all original boards. Everything's restored, um, you know, and, and worked on. So, yeah. That's awesome. And you guys kind of do a competition or, a, you know, friendly competition with a Galloping Ghost, you said? Yes, yes, we, we do. Um, it's called, they called it Arcade Wars. And basically, every month we pick a title that we both have. Um, I think it was, I think this month, well, because we're obviously we're just into August now. Uh, I think last month it was Blade Master, which I think is a Data East game. It's quite a rare game. It's not very common um, at all. I'd never heard of it um, when the when the boss bought the board. Uh, in the first place, um, but yeah, we do that. The, the highest three scores um, get added together and averaged, and then whoever has the highest score at the end of the month uh, wins the the arcade wars. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. And uh, one thing I didn't mention yet was that you run uh, GC8Tech.com, a site that's specifically focused on the uh, PGM, and you have. You're the only source that I have ever seen of uh, PCB scans, uh, which is a big deal when you're talking about a really obscure system like this with like little to no documentation that people are thinking about making repros or you know if there could be a flash card or something one day for it. This is really important stuff. Yeah. So I, how long have you been doing that for? Um, I've probably been doing it like the actual scans. Like I've had the website for a very very long time. Um, the scans. Uh, probably maybe a year, um, not not too long. Most of it actually came out of the. Um, uh, basically, there's there's a guy on um, arcade projects forum, and um, what he's done, he's made the guy's name. Well, he, his handle is Fluffy. Fluffy. Yeah, and he's made. Um, where are they? I actually got some here. He's made. Um, replacement uh, PCBs for the PGM cartridge uh, so that you can build your own cave shooters and you don't need to use um, other carts as donors. And anyway, he was asking me about some stuff to do with the PCBs. And I said to him, well, do you want me to scan one in for you so that you can uh, look at the picture and then follow all the tracks around, which was, that was the, the main important thing. The scans had to be high res so mm -hmm. you could actually follow tracks around. And he was like, yeah, that'd be pretty cool if you could do a couple. And then that just started it. And I started doing one and then I thought, well, I might as well just do them all as I collect them. And now I've And you got have a huge collection too, which I didn't mention is that, I mean, you have so many games and rare hat carts that it's hard to even find the names of them, and a lot of them aren't in Mame. We were, you and I were trying to get them into Mame, a bunch of them that you've been dumping. That was about six months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, I got. Um, there's been a little bit of resistance towards uh, Mame and the PGM. I don't know um, exactly why that is. Um, it took a long time but, to even get PGM into Mame. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, was only a few yeah. years ago, I think. Yeah, it, it's and it's not fully. Not everything is supported. Not all the games are supported. Um, I know Demon Front is, um, but I know there's quite a few games that aren't, and that comes down to the uh, the ASIC, uh, the ARM7 chip not being able to be dumped. Um, so obviously, um, it's it's part of it, it. works in two ways. It works as a copy protection method, but it also can be used to run the game off as a as a CPU, uh, and it just runs an ARM7 core inside, and, and it's got some internal code. Um, Which is uh, actually pretty impressive for the time, isn't it? Yeah, to yeah, have that extra, like an extra processor, basically on the cart, in addition to what you've got on the board itself. 
Yeah, well, it's it's a forty meg. I think that's the the highest clock I've seen it clocked at, and that's it's a an monster. Arm, it's yeah. an ARM seven, and it does a lot. Like you only have to look at the uh, Demon Front games, uh, Gladiator, Road of the Sword, uh, SVG, um, any of the games that use it uh, as the main CPU. Um, they're really huge. Like sprites are huge. Data moving around is is huge. Like the graphics are just it just improves the whole thing. So um, yeah, yeah. They're like when I first got these cave repros in and started playing them, I'm like these are the most. I mean, I have a huge collection of games, and these are by far the most impressive. I think power wise, and they're great games as well. And it just really struck me like I was underestimating the PGM until I saw one of those in person. Well, and uh, actually, let's talk about if we can. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. No, there. no, no, it's all good. Uh, Let's talk about, I wanted to talk about, because the first cliche that I really want to break, and it's even on Wikipedia, is that the the PGM is like a Neo Geo clone, or it was designed to be a competitor with the Neo Geo. And I mean, obviously you look at it and it looks kind of like an MV1B, the horizontal loading one slot. But the Neo Geo MVS came out in 1990. PGM came out in 1997. Between that, all of the big platforms had gone, not maybe cartridge based, but um, modular, where you could, you bought the platform, you know, that you install the platform in the arcade cab, and then you can swap out the game, the B board or whatever. I mean, you have uh, the Taito F3 was like 1992, the CPS2 was 93, the STV, it's the Sega Titan, was 95. These are all modular systems. So just because uh, the PGM, I know the carts look a little bit like Neo Geo and it's red. And it has a little bit of the same, you know, a few of the same parts on it. It's it's weird that people have picked it out as being a Neo Geo clone. I mean, it's way after the Neo Geo, and it's significantly more powerful. And uh, I guess some people think Demon Front is a lot like Metal Slug. It certainly looks like it, but when you actually play it, it feels a lot different. I mean, you have those helper spirits or helper characters or whatever they are. But... um you had talked a while ago about the differences you talked to me about it, about the differences between PGM and Neo Geo. And, um, maybe you could go over that again. Yeah. Well, the base, it's actually quite interesting. There are, um, around the era that they all came out. Um, you know, most people were using a 68 K as the main processor, uh, using a Z 80 as the sound processor, um, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody was sort of doing similar things, but the, the PGM, uh, like the 68K in the Neo Geo, is is clocked at, I think, 12 megahertz. Um, the 68K in the PGM is 20 meg. So you've already got some um, some extra grunt there. The CPS-1 is 10 meg, and then they released a 12 a little bit later on. Um, so you've already got some extra grunt there. You've got the Z80 is... 4 megahertz on the Neo Geo, it's 8 megahertz on the PGM, uh, and then when you get to the, the um, ASIC, the ARM7, um, it, it runs at about, I think 40 is the highest speed I've seen it clocked at, and the Neo Geo doesn't have anything like that um, at all. There's, there's yeah, no so extra. you're talking about you know, a multi-processor capability, basically, here, compared to a Neo Geo, and uh, the sound card on it, or the sound hardware on it on the pgm is really interesting too you were talking about that with me yeah the um it uses a a 32 note um midi uh wavetable synthesis uh chip that was actually released officially for um sound cards so 16-bit um isa sound cards it was originally released for um and it's a monster as well i mean it's not just you know, small, you know, big in size. The actual chip is massive. It's bigger. It's even bigger than the 68K. Like, it's a big chip. It's got a lot of data on board. Um, it's but 32 yeah. channels of MIDI, you were saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, like it's the just, uh, the old Turtle Beach super expensive sound cards yeah, back in that, the PC days. That was where it was mostly used, was on the Turtle Beaches. And um, they were always known to be expensive, but they were also known to be very, very good quality. So it says a lot for what chips they decided to use. Um, so yeah, and the Neo Geo, any of the Yamaha chips, they don't even come close. It wasn't until, um, what the, a, uh, the Soundbuster AWE 32, I think was the, the first sound card that was built that comes close to it. Um, it, it's probably very similar if you grab the Wave Blaster add-on, 
for the sound blasters and, and plug that on. I mean, that's sound blasters add on, but there are there are aftermarket ones now. Um, but it was very advanced. I mean, nothing even comes close. There's no there's no arcade board that I know of that that ever has that much um, sound processing ability um, and the quality as well. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about it, and what you get off if you just plug your PGM in is mono, but you have kind of devised a way to get stereo out of it that you you were talking about releasing some kind of video on that or something eventually so we can grab stereo. Yeah, it's it's not too hard to grab the stereo out of it. Um, the main uh, sound chip uh, feeds the data stream into a, a DSP, and then the DSP uh, converts it out to line-level audio, and then that goes through the amplifier and around about and, and then comes out through the JAMA finger. Um, the only thing I want to look at is maybe making a little, maybe an op amp booster for it. I, I think, I think its line level is a little bit low um, for some amplifiers, and um, so I'm still finalising that. But um, yeah, I do hope to do a video on it and to probably make a little PCB um, with probably some op amps on it or something like that, some low noise, uh, low noise op amps, uh, just to give it a little bit of a boost. Um, so yeah, but it's it's for sound. It's it's really it's really quite amazing. Um, it, it's a huge difference to to see a game in mono and then you know listen to it on stereo. So yeah, yeah. And I have Tim's channel linked. Uh, I have a link to it down in the comments as well. I also have uh, your arcade linked there and uh, the video tour of your arcade, which I think is really cool. And you've been putting some uh, PGM games into rotation lately, haven't you? I saw that beautiful Demon Front cab that you built. Demon Front, uh, most people who first learn about the PGM, the first game that they learn about is Demon Front because it's like this Metal Slug looking game, but it's just, it's an incredible little game. It's, it's become expensive now for some reason. Used to be like a hundred dollar game, now it's selling for like five hundred bucks. But you have like maybe are there any other demon front cabs out there anywhere? It's uh, not a, a cab that yes, you come actually, across. Um that's funny you should actually ask that, because I actually do know. I did do a search um of not not necessarily rarer games, but games that are lit, that are not common. Uh with Demon Front, we are only one of three arcades in the whole world to actually have that game. So wow. That's pretty and it's such huge. an awesome looking cab too. Yeah, it actually came up really, really well. The, the tube went really well. The chassis went really well. It it just looked um, the absolute bomb. Like it just looks so nice um, in the cab. And the yellow cabs is not too bad as well. Plus we did artwork as well because uh, that's another thing we do. We do side art. We've got a big printer that we can print stuff up on. We do side art. Oh wow! Yeah. We do banners. We do uh, even even play fields. Um, you know where all the buttons are on the sticks. We we do customized ones of those as well. So we do we do a lot of extra stuff. It's not just a cab that we mm -hmm. you know shove a game into, get it working, and that's it. You know we do we do try to make the authenticity of the machines and and make them look good as well. Um, and a lot of people appreciate that. So um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Why don't I while we continue to talk, I will fire up a game or something so people can see exactly what we're what we're dealing with here the kind of monster this is. Let me uh, plug in. I've got, let's see, I'll play Ketsui. Oh God, P playing Ketsui live though, is that a good idea? Hmm. <laughs> this is like the hardest shoot 'em up on earth. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Um, he comes in, he's one of our regulars. We probably have a, probably a handful of, of regulars that come in and a lot of them set world records um, at the arcade so we're very proud we've probably got uh, I think 15 or 20 the Street Fighter games uh, the main like you know, Championship Edition Hyper Fighting World Warrior and there was a can't remember the next one, but um, yeah, they were all uh, the world records were all set by one guy, Dale, and and he set them at the arcade. So it's not just oh, an arcade awesome. to come and you know play on games and stuff. The the people too do scoring uh, as well. We do scoring uh, nights as well uh, with tutorials and all that sort of thing because it's it's very different to play a game just to have fun 
than to play a game for for having score. Yeah. So um, that's another. Cool I'm gonna play for fun game. here, just for the record, people. <laughs> so, do you have a big arcade culture in uh, Australia then? Still? Um, we used to. Um, they had in the you know in the eighties um, to the early early nineties were um, uh, were very very popular with arcades, and then basically with the arcade crash um, and 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 home gaming and home consults and all that sort of thing, people just went out less and less and. And all these these people setting up the arcades, they'd all paid, you know, twenty, thirty thousand sometimes for some machines, and mm -hmm. no one was coming to play them. So they basically went broke. And um, there's a so lot. So basically, of... the same story as what happened in the U.S. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I think uh, you guys did it a little bit sooner. Like I think our arcades lasted a little bit longer. Um, so like we went to probably late 90s and then it all sort of you know um yeah went went uh went pear-shaped in a big way um but we're mm -hmm. making there's a huge resurgence uh, of interest in in retro gaming especially arcades um we even have people who come to the arcade and do um photo shoots um for all different types of things which is uh another aspect of the um you know the retro scene as well which is is a bit what do different. they do with those for um there's been a couple we did one of them was a uh a retro clothing line and so they came in and oh, had cool. bot had bottles with shirts and shorts and you know like the retro clothing and they were you know filmed and, and taken photos in front of machines or playing machines or any of that sort of stuff um so that's a really cool little thing that's that started up as well we've actually got another guy i think i think it was actually happening today um, which I don't obviously I don't work today. That's why I'm uh, able to come in here. And um, yeah, they were doing another one um, today. But um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of interest um, in, in with arcades. We have quite a few bar barcades um, coming up. Yeah, those are um, pretty popular here now too. Yeah, and and that's the thing is because you've got to look at it. Where are you going to make your money from? And a barcade. A bar is a good place. <laughs> yeah, the bar works, and then you have a sideline of arcades. Uh, machines. Yeah, I worked so, at a couple of restaurants that were basically maintained by the bar. The restaurant yeah. itself didn't really contribute much money to this, the and setup. That's what, and that's what's really hard for the arcade is because we don't have a bar, we don't have a license, we don't do alcohol um, at all. So it's it's just a core arcade machines at an arcade, um, you know, come and play. But the big thing is, is the free play uh, model where people just pay an admission price to come in and then they can play on whatever they want to for um, as long as we're open until we close. So that works really, really well. Um, the other big exciting thing is uh, there's all the kids out there who have never seen an arcade machine. They've never played one. They have no idea what they are. You know, they're used to playing on an Xbox or a yeah. PlayStation or a, you know, whatever Probably else. Probably barely even seen CRTs anymore. Yeah. And, and, and Especially not games on them. It's, it's really, really amazing to, to see kids you know, first experiences on an arcade machine, you know what I mean? Which is, is the type of thing that I took for granted when I was a kid, you know, I played them. Yeah. You know, we, most people around my age played them back then, so it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's really good to see people uh, enjoying themselves and um, for the first time, so yeah. And we've got, as you said, uh, over 170 machines and an extra machine gets added every week. So, um, yeah, it, it keeps me very, very busy. Um, and so how much space do you have for more? I mean, it seems like eventually you'd run out of space with that many cabs. Do you have enough for an, a year's worth more of cabinets? Not not a full year at the moment. Uh, we are doing a little expansion. Um, at the moment, we also do have uh, pinball machines, but they're not... Uh, I don't have anything to do with them. I don't service them. I don't keep them going. That's done by a a different company who comes and does it uh, in-house for us, um, which is cool. So we've got like is it 40, 40, 43 pinball machines, and we're going to be moving them into their own little room so they can have a dedicated room. Oh, wow. so, so all the space that the pinball machines takes up, which I'm not sure was in the video that the boss did, um, they can all be have machines. And there's definitely room for another 54, 52 machines. Um, definitely when, when they get all moved out. Um, so yeah, but no, definitely, I'm not sure what we're going to do after that. Um, 
the, the boss has talked about it, but we, you know, we always want to expand. We want to have new games. You know, we want people to enjoy themselves, etc., etc. So, the whole thing about having the extra game or the game of the week, as we call it, uh, G O T W, and um, yeah, it, it's it's important because people, even though we have so many machines and you can't play every single machine in one go, like you need to come back, you know, quite a few goes. Um, so yeah, yeah, but it's, it's. I mean, I could probably go there for years. I like oh, to just it, stick to like, you know, four or five games maybe if I go into those barcades. Yeah, it's. And it's, even when I went to Galloping Ghost, it was just overwhelming. One, you want to just gawk at everything, and it's like, there's so much good stuff. Like, what do you want to play? You know, because you've only got however many hours you set aside to go in. Yeah, well, that that that's really like really at the top pinnacle of of an arcade. You know, they have over I think it's 700 machines. So like that's just. That's yeah. The, I, I don't know how it's you, like a museum. I don't know how you'd be able to keep up the servicing to that many machines. Like you'd have to have an, a little army of people to do it to help you with it because there's no way in the world you can do all that just with one person. Yeah, um, they must have a bunch of people. They must have, yeah. But um, but you know, I take my hat off to them. You know, 700 machines. That's a you know, that's a that's a huge triumph. And the, and they're all original. You know, same with us. They use CRTs, etc., etc. It's all good. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. yeah, they're all beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, how did these cave? How did they get these cave games? Maybe talk about that because we t we talked about uh, Fluffy's PCBs that are coming. Like right yep. now, these cave games, you have to sacrifice a game to make one, basically. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And unfortunately, people were even sacrificing Demon Front. You were saying. Yeah, Demon Front. Which is shocking. Is is really an unfortunate um, casualty of this whole. You know, I, I don't have a problem making reproduction cards, but when you're destroying really, really cool games uh, in order to do it, you know, I really don't like that. And that was part of Fluffy's idea. Um, his, his idea is actually twofold. It's one, so you don't have to sacrifice another game, and two, um, you're not running any 3.3 volt chips at 5 volt for the I.O. All the chips that are on it are EEPROMs that are 5 volts. So that's, that's awesome. another reason for his boards is, is everything's at 5 volt. There's no, you don't need level shifters. Nothing's been overdriven. It's all, you know, it's all kosher and it's, you know, it's all going to keep working. Um, so that's another thing for his PCBs. So And you've got some ideas for how to, right now Fluffy's PCB covers the games that don't use the custom ASIC for their uh, encryption, basically. So Unfortunately, that's a lot of the popular carts like um, Gladiator, Martial Masters, Demon Front. They, you can't make those with the Fluffy, fluffy Repro yet. No. But no. you have been working on maybe a possible solution to that one day. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's very slow. Um, I wish I could say you know it's going to be out in a year or you know, a year and a half, and you know everything's going to be good. But it's 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 a been a hard, slow slog um, to do it. But it, it, it is working. Um, so that's that's the big main thing, um, but yeah, that that would be that would be the icing on the cake is having a um, like right at the end would be some sort of FPGA um, that's been done to actually emulate the ASIC chip. That would be an absolute godsend. That would be really really cool. And I think I think that's probably where we're going to have to go because if there is ever a uh, a flash card built for the PGM. It's going to need to be probably on an FPGA, and it's going to need to be able to emulate the ASIC chip. So I can see that there will be a need for it, or someone's got to do something towards it, or else there can never be a flash cart. And I mean, uh, the other day I heard that there's a flash cart coming up for the uh, Brezosoft uh, crystal system, yeah. which, which only ever happened, I think there's only like three or four games made for the whole thing. Like it was very, very underused. And a guy's done a flash card for it. So, like, the PGM's got way more games. Great games, too. There aren't really yeah. any... There's that yeah. Crystal Whatever game for the Brezosoft, but not really any good games for it, more or less. No, so. that's the thing. Like, I've, I've actually got a Brezosoft. Um, I've got one. It was faulty. Um, obviously, a lot of the ports I get are faulty, and I haven't finished repairing it. But the cool thing I got, I actually got an original banner uh, for, the, for the arcade machine. Uh, so... I've actually got to read it. I've, I've got to get it scanned in because I'm sure there are people out there with the Brazosoft system that would like, you know, the original art. And I, I, was, I was lucky to be able to um, actually score one because there'd be, 
I've never seen one again. I've, I've not even even seen another Brezsoft um, system, to, to be honest. So, yeah, and the PGM has so many more games. Um, I think it has a much bigger fan base. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the Brezsoft, obviously. And, and I mean, the games just run. You know, there's not really any games. I mean, okay, there's a couple of Mahjong clones, which you'll um, probably see, because I know I sent you a couple of those. Um, yeah, should I get into the unboxing now? Um, oh, whenever you want. Like it, it's it's um, you're not doing I'm too badly. To... Um, but yeah, the bullets <laughs> are everywhere. Like it's just it's a crazy game. Like we've got people at work and who are like we've got uh, Jesse, one of the guys that who comes in one of our um, regulars, and and he's just amazing at the shoot 'em ups. Like he just he holds the world record for I think Raven Fighters Jet or is it two. Oh, nice. Two or Jet. He holds the world record for that. Um, he holds a record, I think, for Blazing Star as well, which is on the Neo Geo. Um, it's quite a few shoot 'em ups that he's, he's got the world record, and I don't know how he does it. You know, he, he just. The it's like ballet, I think. Some oh, people are like born with it's that. It's amazing. <laughs> it really, really is. But um, you know, good on him, and, and that's the cool thing. So he's he's actually waiting for a few cave shooters to play. He knows that we've got some of the boards, but we just haven't released them. Uh, into cabinets yet, so um, he's waiting for that. But um, no, it, it, it's they are really cool games. The other cool thing, I've I've not found any game for the PGM that has any slowdown in it, um, which I think is an important little note to to say because the Neo Geo does suffer um, quite a few games do suffer from from slowdowns, which doesn't happen on the PGM at all. So that's another little yeah. It feels like they purposefully add some slowdown into these cave games but like the system itself like just cranks through even when you get into these beat em ups and you have like 50 things on screen and sprites that fill the whole screen it just doesn't it just plays super smooth the whole time well that that's one of the the really cool things is that you know the, the guy doing all the sprites must have just gone okay how big can i make them and i'll just make yeah. them <laughs> 10 times bigger than what they need to be but because we've got the hardware to do it um you know let's do you it might as well yeah, so so that's 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 exactly what he did. But I mean, but it's good. The other you know, games are really colourful. They're they're highly detailed. Um, some of the games actually remind me a little bit of Raiden Two, like because the the resolution of the screen on Raiden Two is very similar to the PGM. So you get a very similar detail level. Um, so yeah, I have a Raiden PC. I have Raiden, Raiden Two, and Raiden DX. But Raiden Two and DX are broken still. I need to get to those. Well, if you ever need any help with Raiden 2 and DX, just let me know. I've repaired Ooh, quite I probably a few will. Yeah. Well, let me... Uh, so, Tim sent me this box of PGM stuff all the way from Australia. And I was extremely generous of, generous of you. And this is just... I was looking... Because I was having trouble at first even finding PGM carts of any kind. Eventually, I, I got some through uh, Sheep Nova. But, I mean, they're hard to come by. And so you hooked me up with some pretty interesting stuff. And uh, you said there's some surprises in here. And a lot of this stuff, like, I didn't look too far into it. So, like, I, I have no idea what I'm in store for here either. But maybe you could walk me through these as I open it. Because a lot of these have, like, um, just their Chinese labels on them or whatever. Yeah, one of, one of the other interesting things. I mean, there's many many interesting things about the PGM, but they released so many different versions um, of their games. Um, some with different names, um, and, and it's different regions, like there's uh, China, Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, World, USA, and I think there's one more and I can't remember it. So you've got all these different cartridges you know, built for specific regions, so you've got different text, you've got different title screens, uh, and they release that. So, like, you know, like, which game have I got here? Like, or Oriental Legends, that's got, like, four or five different regions. Yeah. So it's actually, instead of just collecting one card, you actually sort of have to collect four or five because they're slightly different regions. Um, so that makes the, the PGM very tricky to know which card you've actually bought and what the title is. One little hint for anybody who has a PGM and isn't sure what some of the games are called, etc. When you plug them into your PGM, you go to the test screen, and um, I think it's the bookkeeping menu. If you go in there, it'll actually tell you in English what the cartridge name is. Um, so oh, that's cool. a little that's a little hint if you if you don't know what it is and you, you want to you know try and figure out. Yeah, what that'd it be is. really handy. Yeah, it is. I think it's a bookkeeping one. It's one of the menus in there, and it says it right at the top and actually tells you what the cartridge is. 
Um, there's Let also see, can, uh... another little helping bit with the version number. When you first boot a cartridge, it can tell you what the, the version of the, the cartridge is um, on the screen down the bottom. Um, so that's 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 pretty cool too. I'm trying to look through here to find that. Am I in the right place? Let's see. I'm in the test menu. Yeah, it's just if you, if you don't insert a cart, it'll go to the test menu straight away. Um, but if you've got a cart in there, there's a little test button near where the the, the battery uh, battery is. It's what well, it's it's a push button. It's not the switch. There's a little switch, but it's not mm -hmm. that one. It's just the push button one, and that'll take you into the yeah, that's where I'm at. test menu. So yeah. I think it's bookkeeping. It's either bookkeeping or it's the one above it. But one of them, if you go in with a cartridge inserted, um, yeah, it'll actually tell you what the name of it is, which is pretty cool. Oh, and uh, if people want to get a good overview of PGM games, uh, I would recommend Scarlet Sprite's channel. Uh, he has a really good collection. Tim's channel, of course, which I have linked. And um, Luke Morse 1 has a, he has a really good PGM collection, too. He said it's complete, which is insane. Uh, ah, okay. Let me get into here. The test menu that you're looking at now is different. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. It's different on the cave games because oh, okay. the bio they have a different the, BIOS. Yeah, it's it's slightly different. So um, that's not the stock one that a uh, PGM is going to bring up. Um, I see. So yeah, so that's going to be a little bit different. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, here's the top game. I'll just open it like the. Uh ESD safe motherboard wrapping here. Yeah, I like to do that just because you know it. it the bags don't cost that much, and it, it just makes the whole. Um, yeah, it means that the cartridge edge isn't going to get zapped by any of the packaging or anything crazy like that. So I do like to wrap stuff up in anesthetic bags um, for for just that reason alone. Yeah. So let me plug. Uh, I'll just plug this first one in. We can see it. It's got a cool label. It shows the PGM itself on the side. Uh, something three. Is this the three and one or is that? Um, it's probably Dragon World three. Ooh. Dragon World three or Dragon World three special. Um, there's a little bit of a delay in the video at the moment, so I'm yeah. not actually able to see what you're working on. But I, I know once you the video catch up, I'm pretty sure it's Dragon World three special. And most of the most of the Dragon Worlds uh, should be a Mahjong type clone. Most of them are. So um, there is a couple of other ones. They're not just all. Yeah, that yeah that one there. That's Dragon World Three Special. Um, so that's the special version. Um, I didn't realize when I was first collecting these that there is actually a special and a non-special. Um, and funnily enough, the rarity is around the other way. The special version is super common, and the non-special version is, is rare as. Maybe I didn't plug this in all the way. Let me try that again. Oh, wait, there it goes. And uh, I didn't mention this either, but Tim has a bunch of videos. If you're inter Here's the thing about PGM. It's, it's really cheap to get a motherboard in a game. Like, if you just want a really good game to start out and a motherboard, you can get the motherboard for 40 or 50 bucks. Sheep Nova sells it direct for about that much, shipped. And uh, you can get uh, Oriental, Oriental Legends Super Special is a really good beat-em-up. It's 50 bucks. And so you'll be ready to go a full setup for under $100. That's insane in arcade world. And Tim has a really good guide on picking out motherboards. And, uh, like, I have the battery pulled out of this one, as Tim recommends. I recapped it right away before I even powered it on. And uh, you recommend the Revision 14 because Ooh. it's... You I, saw that I, uh, glitching yeah, on this, the first screen. I wonder if I don't have the cart plugged in all the way. Yeah, that's the cartridge slot. It's either... It's not plugged in all the way, or maybe one or two of the pins are not, not quite. Yeah, yeah, not probably. Quite Me, I'll, it, I'll unplug it and do it again. It's very, very fussy. That's probably one of the only bad notes. Well, not totally bad, but it's the PGMs are very, very, very um, touchy with their their cartridge slots, um, uh, and and will yeah display crap graphics. And that's you just need to unplug it, plug it back in. 
Um, if it's a game that you've just bought, I do recommend to clean the edge connectors uh, on the carts because uh, they do get dirty and um, they do cause um, graphics problems. Yeah, I've been going over them all. Well, I've been recapping them, but I've also, I also use uh, Deoxit. I do that for any cartridges, really, before I plug them into my systems. Let's see. And I do have the dual wipe version of the PGM, which is something you talk about. Uh, some have a single wipe or a dual wipe uh, cart slot on them. Yeah. The, the oh, yeah, dual, here it goes. No, it's fine. The dual wipe um, is, is, is not as, as fussy. Um, the Neo Geo uses a dual wipe. Um and, and it uses staggered pins uh, as well, with, which also helps. Um, but, um, yeah, they are a little bit fussy about dirty carts. Um, but, I mean, it's not that hard to clean them. Just get some cotton buds and some IPA alcohol is the best thing to use. But if you don't have that, um, there's another chemical called metho. I'm not sure if it's got the same name in America, but that's what we call it over here, and that's what it's branded over here. Um, you can use that, and, and that's not going to cause any problem. I like to take a, I take a credit card and I wrap a paper towel around it and then I dip that in uh, isopropyl and I clean it out and then I'll do the same thing with deoxit and then when I'm done I'll use a dry one and just kind of clean it off. I use that yeah, for my that, uh, cart connectors. That, yeah, that works well with the, the female connectors, um, but with the male ones that are... Oh yeah, uh, you're talking about the male side. Yeah, they're in the cart, that's, you know, your, um, what do you call them, Q-tips? Um, yeah. Using, using we all have them. different names for those all over the world. Yeah, we, we just call them cotton buds. Um, so, yeah. So that's and so rooted. what, is this Mahjong or something? Yeah, it's it's a it's a, a play on Mahjong, basically. Um, I don't know the total, like, why is it called Dragon World? Um, as you can see, some of the pictures are a little bit sort of uh, more adulty. Um, I think... Most of these games, as you progress through the levels, the actual backgrounds change, and, and sometimes there's a there's a um, uh, how should I put it um, a little bit more adult co uh, content on the, on the backgrounds uh, on this one. But you have to finish a, a couple of different levels. I didn't know to start off with, and um, with going through some carts and you turn them on and they go into a demo mode, and it's like, oh, okay, that one's a little bit more adult than what I thought it would be. Um, even yeah. to the point how I was telling you about I've got an R-rated version uh, of, of one of the PGM cards and it's an official card um, and yeah that's just yeah that's just totally adult it's never been dumped which is really quite funny um, if I had a spare card I'd dump the card um, but I'm not, not willing to because if you take chips off, desoldering chips uh, hot air, whichever way you want to do it can damage boards, can damage chips um, and, and because the game is so rare, I, I don't want to, um, kill the cartridge that I've got now. Yeah. I could pet. Is that one? That's one that you sent to me, isn't it? The one you're talking about? Oh, the, the, the super rare one, the, the R rated one. I could maybe pass that along to the dumping union. Eventually they have guys all over the place. Yeah. Who see, would I've, get it in the meme. I've got all the tools to do it. It's just, I don't want to risk yeah risk the cart that's that's the only thing because i've only got one copy of it um and i've not seen um it was actually just a fluke it was just a cartridge that had a different label to what i'd seen and i didn't even know that it was r-rated because the r-rated sticker is on the other side of the cartridge so you can't if you look at the cartridge it just looks like the standard cartridge um so yeah but it's um yeah a, a lot of the countries around you know the china japan a lot of their cartoony stuff is quite adult or, or is just adult to start with. So um, I'm not surprised that there are a few games that are a little bit more risque than, than um, yeah, some of the others. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had much smut on the channel. We need to get some of that on here. Well, you'll definitely played, find... played uh, Sextress a while ago and <laughs> Hentai Columns. What else? No. There's, there's definitely them. some in the box. I know I sent them. Uh, I'm pretty sure nice. that I did. And, and there's, there's at least one, um, if not two, um, easily. So I know there's definitely one in there. So yeah, so cool. just a little bit of history about the cart. Um, Dragon World 3 Special, um, as I was saying, is, is quite a common cart. Um, if you're looking, if, you're, if you ever want to get into doing Fluffy's um, PCBs, 
uh, to make cave shooters for yourself or if you've got a friend that's got an EEPROM programmer that can give you a hand because uh, you will need an EEPROM programmer to make Fluffy's boards work. Um, and and I'm sure that there are there I know there are EEPROM programmers out there that are like a hundred bucks or hundred and fifty bucks that I'm sure um, would do the two seven C three to two chips uh, and that like what one cave shooters like what which is like the greatest deal in cave arcade games of all time basically <laughs> donor as a as a converted card um, it's it's about one hundred and fifty to to 200 the original boards are not that cheap um <laughs> the original cave boards yeah. are stupidly expensive and i'm talking like a uh, thousand and a half us to two thousand yeah. and a half maybe you know any anywhere around there and, and and i'd love to own them i'd love to be able to scan them in and have them on my site i think it would be it would be really good because it completes the collection um but i i don't see that happening anytime soon yeah you gotta sell a car or something to buy cave games Oh, it's it's just crazy. They just and I, and I don't know who's buying them. Obviously, people are buying them because they get. Oh sold. yeah, I mean there are people. I just saw uh, Donan Pachi sold in like a few hours. Somebody had it listed for like eight hundred bucks on Arcade Projects. It just so I I put a link to it on my uh, Discord. It just sold really quick, and I was like, wow. Yeah, and I guess that's, that's a pretty good deal for that game. Yeah, it is for eight hundred. And it's relatively bucks. common. Yeah, that's 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 not actually too bad. There's actually um, uh, the cave shooters are not all on the PGM. Um, the PGM two has one as well, um, but it again, has Dodan Pachi, Daiojo, whatever. It's like basically the same game, but with a different um, game mode. Yeah, it's it's slightly different, but the PGM two is is very expensive. Um, you know, it's over a thousand dollars for a game and a cart. And some carts are linked to certain motherboards, so you can't just plug any cart in and, and mm. that's it. It's they're actually linked. You've got to buy the matching motherboard. So that's that's a bit. Of I a was pain. this close the other day to buying a PGM two with either um, Knights of Valor two or um, some other game. I talked myself down from it though, and I thought I would just try to save my money. I just thought it would be kind of cool to get a PGM two just to see it. Even though, uh, you know, the majority of the games are, like, outrageously expensive. Yeah, I, I have a f funny feeling. I don't... I can't remember if it's native higher res you can get out of a PGM2. I know a PGM3 definitely does. Um, but I, I think it may be possible to get VGA out of an actual um, PGM2. Um, but I've, I've, I've not done it myself, but I, I think... I um, the the PGM is just the the fourth button and that's it. Cool. Okay, so I've got another cool one here, and it looks like you've included artwork with it. Ah, uh, yes. is this a full kit? Is this yes, a, like I, unopened or yes, something? Yeah, it is. It's an unopened kit. Um, wow. I sent you a couple of them. I don't have a lot of them. They don't come up very often. They sell out really quickly, and you know I had. That's like, crazy. It is, yeah. It's never been opened. It's, it's straight from the factory. <laughs> um, so should I open it? <laughs> I'm afraid to even, like... Nah, it seems it, like I, it should I, go in a museum. I do get them from time to time. So they are rare, but they're not, like, cave shooter rare, rare. Okay. Like the, the single PCB. So not as rare as that. Uh, and, and it is nice to have a cartridge. Um, you know, obviously the cartridge that's in mint condition comes with all the artwork. You know, you're basically unboxing it for the first time in its whole life. Like, I mean, that's, you know, that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, yeah they're rarer. Cool. They don't. I don't get a lot of them. Like Demon Front, I've never seen an art kit for Demon Front. I know it came with one, uh, but I've never seen it. Um, I only have more of the cheaper cuts. Um, but I'd love to have the full artwork, the full original artwork for a, a Demon Front. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. Ah, so that's Dragon World 2, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. Dragon I'm trying World 2. I'm trying to open it super carefully so that I can uh, kind of preserve the bag it came in here. Yeah, well, you could even tell because if you have a look at the sticky tape, you can see that the sticky tape is even aged. Yeah, so, you, that's, you know, yeah that's what I saw is it looks like 30-year-old tape on here. Yeah, so it's... it's it's um, Yeah, yeah I, do, I do get them. Um, you can get them if anybody... 
uh, wants to um, you know collect full kits and and have any mint sort of games they are out there so don't um, don't think you can't find them um, I even get sometimes uh, the seller will have a picture of the cart and he's selling multiple carts and the carts just the cart there's no artwork he just has a picture of the cart sometimes when you buy them you don't know uh, but you can get full kits with them. I've, I've done that before. I had a seller send me three or four, you know, mint, uh, sealed, never been opened, full kits. Um, so, and so where it does do you happen. buy your games from? That's I've, another... I've got all of mine through Sheep now, so far, yeah, except Sheep... for these that you sent me. Sheep Nova is really, really good. I've bought stuff from him before. He does requests, um, and, and he's really cool. He's, he's cool if you've got a problem. Um, I had a motherboard I think I bought off him a while back and it didn't work or there was, there was something wrong with it and um, he replaced it for me no you know no questions asked um, you know he just just sent me a, a, a another one and uh, and the the replacement worked so that, that was all good um, but now he's a really good seller for PGM um, I'm not totally sure where he gets all of his stock oh yeah yeah yeah, I'm friends with Buffalo Joe too. That's cool. He's been helping me get some carts. Um, he's he's really magical uh, about getting carts out of China, um, and and he's been able to get me carts that I just can't even find. I don't know how he does it. Um, he's just got a gift for it, and and he's been sending me carts, which is has been really great. Um, big thanks goes out to him, uh, and I've been trying to send him stuff, mostly Neo Geo carts and tech support so i do a tech support for him so if he needs something worked on or wants to build this or build that he'll send it down to me and i'll do it for him and i'll send it back to him um so that works out really well so cartridges uh the biggest place um i used to get them from um they've sort of dried up a little bit is straight from japan so um yahoo auctions in japan uh is, is where i get a lot of my um uh, pgm stuff if you want any cave gear uh, even though they are stupid pricings, um, that's definitely the place to get Yahoo Japan. So yes, yeah, so I do get a lot of stuff from Japan. Um, I do get some stuff directly from China. Um, so that's a big thing. So there's a couple of different places you can use. Um, Super Buy is a, a, a buying agent that I use, um, but there's, there's heaps. Um, I use Shopping Mall Japan. Uh, for getting stuff from Yahoo Japan Auctions. Um, I haven't used a lot of AliExpress or Alibamba or any of those sites to get cartridges and, and motherboards, but you can buy motherboards off them. Um, yeah, I saw someone is selling the uh, Cave Repros there too on AliExpress. Yeah, that's... I don't know who that was. That's very new. It, it's only been quite recent. Um, I know somebody was asking me um, about it um, not too long ago. I think they were... Think they'd seen them or, or someone had told them that they'd, that they'd seen something on on aliexpress about them so um yeah but that's only very new um you can buy them from sheep um uh, sheep nova are actually i think cheaper anyway so um, yeah and you guys can uh message me if you're a patron and i will give you sheep's direct contact info and you'll save 10 or 15 bucks each on those over ebay prices because he doesn't have to pay the fee which is cool which saves yeah. you quite a bit if you're buying all three yeah, it does. It, it definitely does. Um, I'm not sure if he's actually making the conversion cart uh, himself, like like taking a donor and actually doing the conversion, or whether he's got someone that does it for him. Um, so I can't I can't speak about that. Um, and I haven't bought any conversion carts for him. I've just bought uh, original carts, um, mostly different, trying to get different versions. Um, that's one thing I've been trying to do with the motherboard uh, scans. That's another thing that's on my site. Uh, it's not just PGM uh, cart PCV scans. I also do have motherboard uh, scans as well and, and other technical data about the PGM and, and, and stuff like that. So um, it's not just the cart's uh, internals that are there. Um, the motherboards are, are also there as well. Um, I was trying to get a lot of different versions of the motherboards, um, but that became quite expensive, obviously, because um, you, most sellers, if you say, hey, I want a Rev 11 or a Rev 12, um, they're not going to totally know what you're talking about. So it's hard to, to get revisions of the motherboards that are different than what you've got because most people don't know. Um, but that's all covered in my videos as well. Uh, yeah, you have some great videos on the motherboard revisions and uh, why why people would want to look for a certain one over another. Yeah, they're, they're, they've been very, very popular um, and it is a huge thing. The, the only other negative 
uh, about the the IGS PGM is the early versions of the boards used uh, rechargeable NICADs or nickel metal hydrides. Uh, and if anybody's familiar with that sort of um, battery backing up, you'll know that all of those batteries leak and they destroy the boards that they're usually on. Uh, unfortunately, the, the PGM does suffer for this and that's one of the things that I, I, I do um, tell everybody is to get rid of the battery once you once you buy your motherboard uh, and just clean it up uh, and should be all right the later revision boards because the batteries haven't been on there for as long usually don't leak so that's why i always recommend that you get a revision 9 on your board um, but that's all covered in the in the videos that i've got on youtube about that sort of stuff cool and uh, electron ash asked what's the rarest or most expensive arcade cab that you own or know about I'm going to go grab one beer real quick while you answer that. Uh, I'll be right back. The most expensive. Um, that's a really interesting question. Um, we don't have any of the original cave machines, uh, but they would be through the roof um, just because the boards themselves are so expensive. Probably... Probably... Not the not the most expensive, but uh, but definitely up there. Definitely, uh, it was about three or four grand. Um, we've got a machine called um, Metal Gear Solid Arcade, and it's basically a Metal Gear um, the PC version, but in an actual arcade machine. And it runs uh, oh, three wow. dimensional three dimensional glasses. So you got three D glasses. You've oh, also awesome. got a gyroscope in the glasses, and you've got a, a gyroscope in the gun. So as you move your head, the actual screen moves with you as if you are actually a real person in the so game. So like VR around. almost. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. It, it, it reacts to you moving around. Uh, or you can do it with the gun. You can move the gun around and that will also move you around. Um, it's a very high tech machine. It was only ever released in Japan. It's heavily, the language is heavily, heavily Japanese, so it's very difficult to play because you just can't read any of it, and it takes a while to get into the game. Uh, but as far as I know, there's only three in Australia that were ever imported, uh, and that's unofficially imported. It wasn't an official import. Mm -hmm. um, the only problem with it is, well, apart from being very, very expensive, is that people break the parts on it, the gun, the 3D glasses, the gyroscope, um, it, at the moment, it's actually broken. Um, somebody uh. broke the glasses, and without the glasses, you can't play it because you can't see it in 3D, and you can't. The gyroscope won't work anymore. So it's. Um, that sounds like it would be a recurring problem too once you fix it. Yeah, gun. That's probably that's the the machines that get broken the most are gun games, and that's not just kids. That's adults. Adults do it. Um, they break the guns as well. They bastards. Treat, treat them really, really badly. <laughs> I mean, we had a game. Um, Crisis Zone, uh, which is a gun game, a single player gun game. And um, somebody broke the gun, we fixed it up, put it out. I think it lasted two days or something before someone broke it in a different spot. Uh, yeah. and, then it, and then it was off for like six months to a year. Um, it was off for a very long time until I, I finally got onto it and redid it all again. And I had to do some chassis work and some tube work. Um, but it's back out on the arcade and it's actually still working. No one has broken the gun yet, so that's a good sign. But, yeah, people do slam the guns onto the machines and, you know, get a little bit frustrated if they lose and, you know, that sort of thing. So stuff gets bashed around and, and it's not necessary, like, you know, but that's the problem. A lot of the people, they come and they think, oh, we pay our, our $15 or our, our $18, however money, you know, what yeah. we pay for. And then we can just do whatever we like. And, and that's really, really sad because it's just, you know, the amount of time and effort... Uh, that goes into getting these machines, you know, they really should be respected and, and looked after yeah. because, of, because of what they are and, and everything that goes into actually, um, you know, getting them going and, and keeping them going as well. Yeah, I know those I know those type of people here talking about. It's, it's disgusting. I live in a really touristy area over here, and it's like 24 hours a day I have these people who have no respect for anything on Earth, like pat, walking around drunk in this area, just destroying it once a day and then the city comes and cleans it up every night all right so this is another unopened kit that you sent me uh, now, this yes. one looks uh juicy yes, it, this, uh, this, this just one. guessing 
this one is definitely definitely a little bit more adult orientated um i wanted to send you a full kit because the artwork is just hilarious um awesome and i've, I've got i picked up from one seller he must have had the last stock that he had and, he, and then i bought like four carts off him and i said you know like have you got any more and he's like yeah i got a couple more and he's like ah oh, i'll just throw them in for free then because I'd already bought, you know, nice. four or five cuts. And they came in, and they were all complete packs, never opened, mint condition. Um, and that's one of them from that set. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool game to get into a lot of the adult stuff. Obviously, after you finish a level, and you as you level up, um, the pictures in the background get a little bit more uh, risque as, as, as such. But it's... Um, yeah, I definitely. I was pretty sure I did send you a full kit of it, and I did send it to you. So that'll be the first one that's a little bit adult. Um, All right. If you're easily offended, then too bad. You need to learn. You need to grow up, and uh, you're just going to be exposed to some really toxic human body stuff here. Let's see how this is. <laughs> no, it's probably pretty uh, tame. So yeah. So that one, the English name. Um, there's a few things. One of them is really. for a little bit, you know, quite a bit of money. Um, I definitely know that one recently has been going for about 100 US, um, which for, for what it is, I mean, okay, I know it's a little bit risque, um, but it's, it's not just like a $20 game um, at all. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I can send these back to you one day too. I, no, mean, I don't no. need to like uh, no, it's, it's all, have a all... dragon's hoard of this rare stuff. No, it's good. It, it's good to share. There's... What's the point of having all these cartridges and knowing all this stuff about the system if people can't play it or get, you know, fun out of it, etc., etc., you know? And it, it doesn't cost, you know, like I'm buying carts all the time. I do it slowly. Um, that's one thing I, I like to do with collecting stuff, um, and a lot of people do as well, is, is not just buy everything at once, is actually enjoy the actual collecting of the carts themselves um, and, 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 you know, experience them, play them, you know, show them to friends, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you. This game is going to make me want to learn Mahjong. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, this, I probably won't make it to the second level. One, uh, see, they've got two different types. One of them's Mahjong with a, a background that's a little bit risque. The other one uses... Um, uh, there's another like a game puzzle? Called, called... Yeah, Photo Y2K. And you've got two pictures, and you've got to circle the differences... Uh, in the pictures, and I think this there is the one that actually, which you actually circle, circle the differences in the in the um, pictures. But they're very similar games. Like, yeah, you got pretty chance, yeah. So this is Dragon. There's some World. good uh, Alex arcade games like that that I've actually I actually remember seeing one at a bus stop or at a truck stop in the U.S. where it's just like uh, n you know nude pictures of really okay, 1990s like Playboy centerfolds. So this is Mahjong, but with adult... Well, obviously the backgrounds haven't started yet. Um, but as you go through it, yeah, the, the, the backgrounds do get a little bit more adult. I did send one. There's one with the that's also called Same Same, and that was the one I was first talking about. It's the one where you actually you pick the differences in the two photos. So I'm pretty sure I sent you one of those. So obviously that's uh, you haven't got to it yet. But um, yeah, it's, they, they did sell a lot of these. The, the, the Mahjong carts are... are they're not rare at all, um, as full kits they are, um, but just as a cartridge to use, they're, they're pretty cheap. Um, if you're looking for a cartridge cell, uh, shell to, to use for, for Fluffy's PCBs, uh, etc., some of these games are really, really cheap. I know uh, Dragon World 2, I picked up a few of those uh, for less than $20 um, US, uh, which is pretty cheap for a, for a cart. Um, just recently, uh, but with the push to people getting more interested in it, carts are slowly getting more expensive um, because more people are, are buying them. Plus, you've got, as as we talked about with the cave, people are taking um, current games and then doing conversions on them, and some of those games are really cool, like Demon Front's being used, and that's why Demon Front is actually so expensive now. Um, I bought Demon Front, I think, for... I think it was 100 US or a little bit less than that, maybe 75. Um, but that was a couple of years ago, and um, now it's like 200 plus. Um, 
and hard to get. Um, you know, like the, at the moment, yeah. I, think, I think there's only oh, one. Oh, it's not right now. The cheapest one on eBay is like five hundred or something. Or yeah, it, yeah, I in, think in, in Japan, I think the cheapest one at the moment is two hundred US. Um, so yeah, but it, it, it's really sad that that people are are using them for conversion because the game is really cool. You know, one of the myths is that oh, it's just Metal Slug. It's a copy of Metal Slug. You know. Um, which is really selling the whole game really, really short. Um, yeah. It does have some similar similarities to Metal Slug, but there are lots of games that have similarities to Metal Slug, you know. Um, Any and, running and gun like after Metal like Slug. It, so, yeah. Yeah. Let me... Um, I'll switch over to a game I can play for a minute, which uh, is one that I picked up. The... Um, I'll do Oriental Legends because I haven't shown a beat 'em up yet, and that's uh, something yes, that uh, PGM has lots of. Oh yeah, there's heaps. I mean, you've got, I mean, just for starters, you've got Knights of Valor or KOV as it's as it's also known. So if you're doing searching for uh, Knights of Valor, uh, KOV is good to search for, um, just in case you're, you're having trouble finding cart. But it's got there are so many old games. There's okay, I got one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> oh man! I've got nine carts here that are all uh, Knights of Valor, uh, with with some version, obviously. Um, like Knights of Valor, Nine Dragons. Um, you know, they all have bookkeeping menu, or it's one of the menus. You'll you'll see it. Um, it's it, it's it's definitely in there. I just can't remember which menu it is. Um, I think it's bookkeeping. Um, but yeah, you yeah, need a card. You need to have a card inserted, uh, and then once the card is booted, press the hold the test button, uh, and then the menu will come up, and then it'll be able to tell you what the cartridge is. If you boot it up without a cartridge in it, it won't tell you anything. It's just blank. Um, mm -hmm. So you do need a cartridge in there to do it, but it's really, really handy to figure out what games some of these are, uh, because their names are very similar and very, very tricky. Uh, plus, you even get carts. The name is in. Now, let me get this right. There's um, traditional Chinese, and then I think there's simplified Chinese. If I'm getting, I think, I think there's they're the main two, and and the actual text can be either or, so or a mix of the both. Um, so yeah, so some of the text on the cards makes it really, really difficult um, to figure out. So and yeah, is so this, this is the game I've been recommending to people. Like, if they don't want, if they aren't interested in the shoot 'em ups, which of course is to me the bread and butter. I mean, that's the cream of the crop for the PGM. But uh, yeah, I, you you recommended this to me to get the Oriental Legend Super Special with the pink label because it's kind of. Of the ten Oriental Legend versions or whatever, this is kind of the the last one with everything in it. Yeah, it, the, the pink label is um, it's not hugely common, um, but it's it's usually um, yeah. See, if you look down the bottom of that screen, it's got version two hundred five, so that's the actual ROM version of, of this version of the of the game. Um, plus, you saw the name uh, in the in the bookkeeping menu as well, so um, that's what I was talking about. But but no, there are a lot of good beat 'em ups. Um, there, uh, we, we did talk about uh, Gladiator, Road of the Sword, uh, which is the yeah. same game. It's got two different names. That's a really popular one. It's it's hard to get. It's expensive. Um, the single board PCB um, is is also quite expensive um, as well. But um, it's yeah, the I think the cart's probably a little bit more rarer than the PCB, um, and that's the one that's the one that I sent you today. So. Um, awesome. That PCB should that be arrived awesome. uh, in what two weeks or something. Um, I'll something. do a special stream for that because yeah. Gladiator was one of the games. It goes by two names, like Tim said: Gra Gladiator, Road of the Sword. That yeah. it's, it's and the Cave cool. games were the ones I saw originally, and Demon Front, of course. But yeah, Demon Front, I missed the boat on that. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, that's one of the tricky things is because they all do have most games have a couple of different names. Um, like my boss, he he only knew it as the Gladiator, and I said to him, "Do you want Road of the Sword?" And he's like, "No." And he's like, "Ah, oh, I'd like to have Gladiator." And I'm like, uh, <laughs> "Gladiator and Road of the Sword are the same game." It's like, "Oh, cool." It's like, "Well, yeah, I'll have one of those." Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, and oh, that's the other thing that we haven't mentioned about the PGM. 
is uh, the motherboards come with an extra connector on the side that's for the third and fourth player. So some PGM games, you can actually have a third and fourth player in them, which makes the beat-em-ups really, really cool because you've got more than one person to, you know, help beat yeah. up all the sprites. And there's always heaps of monsters, heaps of sprites that you have to do. Um, so that's that's something that's a little bit different because I don't... I don't think the Neo Geo has any... I think they had a... Was there an add-on or something? For yeah, there was one single game that came with a special... Uh, where you could link two cabs together. Yeah, something no, like that. but it's... Yeah, so that's... And that's that's factory. That's factory from um, from the start. The PGM has that capability. So you've got... Uh, most of the King of Fighters do... Um, what's the other one that does? The Gladiator does. It's a... Knights of Valor. Yeah, Knights of Valor, yeah, they do. Most of them do at least three, um, if not four. Um, and that's the same for the PGM2 as well. It's got a third and fourth player. Um, and basically, you can wire it up yourself. Um, the cable, if anybody's can't find a cable to actually do it with, it's the same as the floppy drive cable. So it's just a, an IDC uh, ribbon cable. Oh, cool. and, and, and you can just branch them off and, and make your own connector. And the, the pinouts for that are all over the web. So that's... Um, not something that's that's unknown. The factory one actually goes to a long wire with a JAMA connector at the other end. So you basically put two cabs next to each other and then you just run the cable from the PGM 3 and 4 into the other cabinet and just plug it into the JAMA connector and then you've got a four player. Um, so nice. yeah, at work, hopefully we're doing a Road of the Sword. Um, it's either a three or four player and we're actually going to oh, uh, wow. build a custom machine to do that. Um, that's another thing we do like doing. A lot of games have third players, but in the arcade they only ever had two um, because the machines either weren't big enough or you know they were just pumping out you know two player machines and that's just how it is. Um, so like we've got a, a Bomberman four player, uh, Bomberman World, and that was the oh, cool. first machine we did our own playfield artwork completely from scratch. And um, yeah, it's a four player, and, and and the four players do get a lot of play um, at the arcade. Um, that's yeah, definitely... those are the ones that are fun when you come in with a group, so yeah. you can all play the same game. Yeah, well, it's like your, t your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, that's yeah. a you know, that's a four player, and that gets so much play at work. It's not funny. Um, yeah, that yeah, was the very a... first game I got. That's one when thing I started collecting the PGMs with the third and fourth player. Not not a lot of people know about, and that's what that extra connector is on the side. So um, yeah, so now you know about you know what it is. Um, when you buy the if you if you ever buy a single. Um, PCB version of the Gladiator or SVG or, or any of those like that, they'll also have that connector on there as well, so you can, you can always hook up the third and fourth player. If there is uh, no That's connector... Spectroverse Generations, if people don't know. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Really popular I, should, I should say the full game. names. I'm just used to, to call yeah, it Yeah, you're used to... Um, SVG is, uh, is quite a rare card. Um, I don't have it um, because it is quite rare and it's hard to find. Probably the the hardest carts to find and the most expensive, easily SVG um, as a cart. It's it's rare as it's very hard to find, um, and and when they do sell it, it's it's stupid money. The next one is probably Martial Masters, uh, which is a fighting game. So so SVG is a fighting game. Uh, Martial Masters is a fighting game. Um, the boss really, really likes Martial Masters, so we've actually got Master March Masters in the arcade as well. Um, that's our second. And that's like game. a fighting game that's really kind of a cult, has a cult following. Oh, Martial Masters does, yes, very much so. That's why I was always surprised that SVG didn't. But I did see something the other day with uh, SVG being on the PlayStation Two. Mm -hmm. I have a funny feeling now. I don't know yeah. if it's the same version as. The PGM version, uh, or, or where it sits in the in in the you know the SVG world, uh, but I didn't know that the that the PlayStation actually had an SVG, so um, that's the, the interesting thing um, about that. Another little interesting thing is uh, the Sammy um, Atomus Wave. Um, I really want to get an Atomus Wave. Or yeah, it has. It. it has. Um, I've actually got one here. Um, it's okay. got um, a, a Knights of Valor game uh, for the oh, nice. uh, for it as well, made by IGS, obviously, um, but not a PGM game. It's only for the for the Atomus Wave. Um, so yeah, so that's um, yeah, Knights, Knights of Valor: The Seven Spirits. 
So that was only released on on this. It was never released on the PGM. Uh, it was only for, for for this. So that's an interesting, um, yeah, an interesting game in the the, the grouping of, of IGS and, and PGM and all that sort of thing. Cool. I am using now. Uh, let me show this off. I just got this in from uh, Magic Trash Man. It's a Neo Geo Mini controller that's modded with a clicky thumbstick and uh, DB15. Okay. Yep. Which is good for beat em ups, you know? So people don't have to hear my joystick noise all the time. I don't like it so much for shoot em ups, I have to say. I just don't like controllers for shoot em ups myself. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, I, I, I do. I'm, I'm probably. The, the the fighting genre like you know Street Fighter and 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 you know Martial Masters and SVG I probably don't play them very often and I'm probably not very good at them um, I prefer I'm I, I prefer either you know a shoot 'em up um, or a, a level platformer some version of the you know, level mm -hmm. platforming games um, you know obviously like Demon Front um, which is is really really cool. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't... I thought, growing up, I thought I was good at fighting games because I could beat my friends. But then I met my wife, and she just destroys me every time. And <laughs> then I start watching, like, Team Spooky uh, competition streams, and I'm like, oh my god. Like, I don't I don't want to even, like, show my face in an arcade with a fighting game. Like, these people are so good. Yeah, well, the boss is really, really good. He's he's good at, 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 at fight, like, a lot better than... Than me, um, he's got a few world records as well. Um, but yeah, as I said in the, the start of the video, the, um, the 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 big four uh, Street Fighter games, yeah, all had the world record by one guy at our arcade. So you know, that's 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 pretty pretty cool. I like but, I uh, love watching those competitions. Well, that's that's another thing that we do do. We do have uh, competition nights. Like we had one the other day with uh, Mortal Kombat three, I think it was. Um, oh, awesome. and, and we had a, um, a competition and then you get a prize and it's usually some cash prize and then a, a trophy as well to go with it. Um, so we, we do do stuff like that at the arcade as well, which is really, really cool. Um, we've actually got Mortal Kombat 1, 2 and 3 Ultra um, at the arcade. So anybody who's into the Mortal Kombat, um, they're all there waiting to be played. Awesome. I have Mortal Kombat 1 and 2... I, I'm not really good at them either. I definitely, uh, back in the day, I was afraid of those cabinets when they were new because the people who played them were so good and they just, they were so mean to you and I was just a little kid. They'd destroy you in 10 seconds and then like, you know, uh, just totally take away your masculinity <laughs> in front of everyone. <laughs> and there was a big, there'd always be a big line of people. So I usually just watched that one from a distance. Plus, it was like a 50 cent game, and I was playing the 25 cent games. Yeah, well, I one of my first um, uh, fighting games, which whether I should admit or not, um, that I used to be fairly good was. Ah, um, oh, now I've forgotten its name. That'd be good. Um, what is it? Ah, um, oh, Time Killers. Oh yeah, I have. T I um, had Time Killers. I sold it, and I kind of want to get it again. It's just, that game back in the day, I, I used to think that was a. Whole, I loved watching it and playing it, where you can chop up all the limbs, and they had it on a huge uh, showcase cabinet at my arcade for like a year. So we thought it was like an awesome game. But now you look back on it now, and it's just like it looks almost like shovelware. <laughs> but it's so hilarious. It, it's, it's actually not a bad game. Um, I actually at one stage. Um, actually used it as a as a little bit of a test board um and very very early on when i when i started doing um arcade stuff which was yeah you know what 20 time years, killers is one i recommend ago. i always keep a mental list of the negative five volt games because you always find people have them on ebay for repair or whatever untested and a lot of times, like with my time killers, they just didn't know it needed negative five volt. So, like the audio and the video was kind of weird without it. But I got it, and I just plug it into my setup, and it works 100% fine. So it's one of those boards you can get for like the cost of shipping. And a lot of times, it just needs that negative, like you know, like Primal Rage is like that too, and a few others. Yeah, Double there's Dragons, a all of them, I think. 
there's, there's, there's quite a few games that do. Normally, 99% of the time, the minus five is just used for the sound. Mm-hmm. Um, so Yeah, that's the know, trick with double dragons. If you see them listed with no sound, yeah. you yeah. know that the person just didn't have negative. I mean, pretty much. Maybe it needs a recap or something, but... Yeah, it's, it's very common. Like, there's a lot of people, you know, most of the power supplies... Um, I mean... Power supplies with with all three volts, so your your plus twelve, your plus five, and your minus five are not uncommon. Um, but yeah, a lot of people. It should just, be standard, you would think, you know. Yeah, it some it it it's it's a little bit up and down. Like some cabinets, uh, because the ones without minus five at one stage were actually cheaper. Um, I think that's what happened is they just cheap cheaped out on the power supplies, uh, and and so there's a there's a lot of machines out there that don't have minus five. Or people aren't used to a minus voltage. Like most people will know a positive voltage, you know, 12 volts from your battery in your car, you know, like, you know, 5 volts for, for this and that. You know what I mean? Like people actually mm-hmm. know positive voltages, but the the, the idea of a negative voltage doesn't It blows people's of, mind. Yeah, they're like, oh. When I say, know, like, whenever I say it to people, they're like, oh, yeah, you mean ground. I'm like, no. Like, I mean nah, actual no. negative 5 volt. It's a thing. I don't even know what it. What is it? Is it like drawing five volts or something instead of producing yeah, it? Like no. What, what it basically is, it's 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 minus five volts. So basically, you've got plus five. So that that goes to the to the top, and then you've got negative five. So basically, the polarity is around the other way. If that makes any sense. So you can still get shocked by negative five volt. Is that what you're saying? Oh no! Any voltage negative five is not going to shock you. None of the plus twelve. But if I lick my finger and I touch it, I wouldn't feel anything. No, no, won't feel anything. Okay. Like you know when you get your tongue. It's just that little. To a uh, a nine volt battery and you get a zap. Oh yeah. Um, you're not going to get any of that stuff with with plus twelve or um, or or plus five or anything that out of an arcade supply. Um. Don't pre- don't put your finger on the AC screws yeah, or, uh, or terminals. Don't do that. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a different story. Yeah, that's that's a very different story. But no, you're not going to be shocked by by minus five or um, plus twelve or, or any of those those voltages that it has uh, on a JAMA board. They're they're completely safe. Um, I got shocked yeah. by a solid state 1,000 watt amplifier a long long time ago when yeah, I had it that, open, I it had like that, some something left in the capacitor or something yeah. that really uh, like knocked me on my ass. <laughs> well, that's that's very similar to, to how the flyback transform, transformers work in a uh, an arcade cab. Like they, they keep their voltage for quite a while and you could have it mm-hmm. unplugged for a, a week and it's still got enough juice to, ooh, to give you a, you know, a bit of a mm-hmm. jump. So, you know, there are high voltages in arcade machines and, and they need to be treated with respect so that you know you don't injure yeah. yourself your cab or, or somebody else or your cat yeah well the cats get in and out of my cabinets all the time so um yeah it, it's it's it is important yeah i built i use like a hat power pro ultimate to build my power supply just because i was worried about my cat mainly because he just gets into everything he's sticking his nose and everything and that was before you could get, like, 3D prints to cover up the terminals or whatever. Although, I mean, you could put some tape over it. <laughs> yeah, how I do it, I just have um, a piece of Perspex with a right angle on the bottom. And um, it just goes up and covers all the terminals. And, you know, you have to really push your finger in there to actually do it. Like, if you just accidentally bump it, you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, but it's, um, yeah, safety. I've actually done, there's actually a video that I've done as well. Uh, on on chassis safety and and what to do and what not to do, etc. Uh, etc. Et so that's that's actually a video that I've done. If anybody's uh, interested about that that um, that subject, um, plus I've got a whole heap of other videos on all sorts of different stuff as well. So I'm sure if you have yeah, a look, and you've been doing a full restore of a cabinet two series, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I've been I, I started to do that. Um, the the tricky thing with that is that the camera angles are bad because. I don't have somebody to hold the camera for me, so the camera has to be fixed, and I need to work around it. So the the results haven't been brilliant, um, but I've definitely started. Um, oh, I could do- tell immediately from your first video. I started pushing your channel because I'm like, this is a great. This is going to be great because you came out, you know, right away with your first PGM videos. You just have a great personality for YouTube, and I mean, like. You actually know what you're talking about, which is kind of rare, actually. I mean, at the technical level. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. So here's a game that you sent that has no label on it. Ah, I know what that is. Oh, let's see. 
it's a hack cartridge, so that should be... Oh, cool. If you have a look at the side of it, you'll see there are some laminated stickers. Oh, yeah, cool. I think it says, is it uh, SF or SF hack or SF something? This one is LSQH2 plus hack one. Yeah, SF hack. SF. So this is the Street Fighter hack. So this is... Oh, yeah, uh, I heard about this. Yeah. This is, um, yeah, the... Yeah, you've got a cool uh, theory about these hat carts. Because the hat carts are really interesting in they this are. respect. They're, they're very, very interesting for, for quite a few reasons. Um, the quality of the hack uh, is really, really well done. The, the sprites that they've added, because what they've done is they've taken an original game. Very smooth, looks good. Uh, so there's one area. The next area is that um, they use all the original stickers. So you've got your hologram <coughs> stickers... Your tested stickers, they're all there, they're all original, they're all real. Um, but Oops. the cool thing is inside the cart, um, most of the, actually all of the parts that are in it are all off the shelf, straight off the shelf. Um, so yeah, so that's the biggest um, interesting point is that at some stage, I'm hoping that hack carts will lead the way for either a flash cart or help me to do the ASIC chips uh, that I needed for Demon Front. Um, and they so yes. even have you kind of thought that maybe it's somebody from the actual factory like they have hologram stickers on on yeah, and all of the per, the exact matching like it, uh it's got to be somebody stuff. either somebody who knew someone that worked at the factory or someone who worked for the r d department at igs that had to be um because there's no there's no pgm dev kit out there you can't just download the software and mm -hmm. you know start making your own games it, it doesn't exist um, I've emailed IGS about that and asked them, you know, do you still have dev kits, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Oop. Okay, that's... Yeah, yeah, I plugged it back in. I've got it now, I think. <laughs> oh, something's still off here. Maybe I need to do it again. It's still a little wonky. Yeah, the plastics, I don't think, are 100% original. Um, you just have to click it in and... It should go in, and then it'll boot to the to the um, the title menu. Let me just uh, play around with it a little here. Yeah, there we go. So yes, if you look at that down the bottom, you can see all the data about the game, uh, what it was based off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is basically um, uh, Knights of Valor. So it's a it's a oh, which one is it? Uh, it's one of the Knights of Valor. Okay, that's playing up a little bit there. Unless that's... Is that playing up or is that the screen res? No, it's... I, I need to plug it back in again, I think. It does happen. These PGM This is how are, arcade streams go, by the way. Yeah, they <laughs> Every are, single time. They are very, very touchy on their carts. Um, that's why I always recommend is, you know, when you get a cart in, clean it. Um, you know, and, and then put it back in. But yeah, the, the plastics aren't... I don't know if the pla I don't think the plastics are original. I think they're they're a little bit cheaper plastics, and they're ah, being done. Uh, it's definitely original. So someone from the factory had to do it. Ah, uh, this is not playing game, is it? I got it. I, I got it now. It'll come. You'll see it eventually. I just had to replug it in a few times. Yeah, it's it's just yeah. The especially the 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 hack carts because they're not the boards are not original. They're not. Um, you know, the dimensions are a little bit out, um, but you, you should be able to get it. Um, in... Wow, so I've got Knights of Valor now. This is one of the games I really wanted. Yeah, well, that's... Awesome. One of, one of the reasons I sent it was is not just because it is a hack cart and it's a little bit different. Um, it is actually... You can still play it. The game, the game can still be played. Um, the only thing that... The main difference is that the Street Fighter characters are in there. So you've lost That's a couple so awesome. of the characters to play, but it is still Knights of Valor. You can still play. Yeah. Uh, and. Oh wow! Oh uh, holy crap! I'm at the uh, character menu now. Yeah, you can be M Bison. You can be everybody. You can be Chun Li. <laughs> I'll do. I'll be Chun Li. That's awesome. It's it's really Whoa, good. this it's is a sweet. Really good hack. Like it it had to have been someone from the factory or the R and D. They had to have done it. 
because it's just so smooth. It's it works. It's not clunky. You know, you get games that are you know Chinese mm-hmm. copies or knocks off. Yeah. And, and the graphics are just crap, and you know they're not quite right. And you can tell that, like like how the uh, and I'm not paying it out. The 161 in one. Yeah, those are hacky hacks. <laughs> yeah, ne- the Neo Geo multi cart. Um, multi-game card that you can get, you know, like it runs, but some of the games are just really bad. Yeah, anything with a plus byte is pretty much junk for the most part. On the uh, 161. Oh, yes. this is sweet. So with the hack carts, um, this is the Street Fighter hack cart, as we've as we've discussed. Um, there is more than. Um, yeah, see, there we go. See, there's some of the, the Street Man, Fighter. I remember just... playing this in Mame a long time ago. This is awesome. The, was Thanks it for the exact, sending me this. Is, that, is it this exact version that you played? No, I played the I played the original one. I mean. Ah, uh, okay. Because I was gonna say this. This. I've never seen the hat cart. Yeah. This wasn't originally, and it's still not in Mame yet. Um, I haven't been able to get it completely added yet. Uh, still working on it. I'm sure I'll get there, but it's. Um, I yeah. was a little shocked by the response from Mame when we contacted them because I thought they would just be like, "Oh wow, thank you," because we sent them. You sent me the ROMs, and then I sent them to my guy in Mame, and then they kept on asking for more and more stuff. They're like, "Oh, give a full description of the differences between the game, a picture of the blah blah blah, a picture of blah blah blah." It's like, come on, just take the freaking ROMs. Yeah, it. it That's kind of uh, how I felt. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. I, I ended up contacting a few, uh, a couple of different other guys who had links to Mame, and some of the other stuff that was not so. I I don't know if it's because it's a hack. That's mm-hmm. why they're they're so resistant to it. But there's games where they're just a different version. Um, like like the game's already in Mame, but I found ROMs that are a different revision. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they got different like. You know, bug fixes and all that sort of thing uh, inside them. I've been able to get them fairly easily into MAME uh, now and have added quite a few um, into MAME. Um, That's cool. I mean, well, so they have yeah. all the hacky stuff for uh, Neo Geo in there. You would think they would be all over this. Yeah, I mean, this, I... a lot of people would prefer this to the original one, actually, just because it has Street Fighter characters. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's actually, with the hack carts, um, there's actually a couple of different versions. This is the Street Fighter one, as I, as as, well, as you can see. There's also there's a, a King um, of Fighters. Yeah, King of Fighters. There's a there's a King of Fighters that, that'd be cool um, too. That's done, and actually on the PGM two, there is actually a Neo Geo uh, ga- the game that the um, oh, yeah, I've forgotten King of Fighters ninety eight or yeah, King of Fighters ninety eight. Was it ninety eight? Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome too. I love on, that game on, on the PGM two. Um, which is really, really funny because it's, you know, obviously SNK did it, so um, that's a sort of a weird little crossover. So that's unofficial then? No, 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 it's official. Oh, it is? Yeah, very much official. It's an official card, um, but it was it was done by SNK, and it's, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, why... Well, there why was be- weird stuff going on, like you had uh, SV- SVC versus uh, SNK on the Neo Geo, and you're like... Uh, what's the Capcom stuff doing on the Neo Geo or Capcom versus Neo Geo? Capcom, SVC. Capcom and, and and Neo Geo did a lot of titles like that. You know, somebody versus something. You know, like Capcom versus you know the mm-hmm. world. Basically, um, they did a lot of those, especially very late in the Neo Geo's life, um, mm-hmm. because yeah, that's, that's when the, 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 the single board uh, Neo Geos came out, or what I like to call um, zero slots. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is actually a term I've used quite a bit, but you that's know, a single good one. slot, single boards, zero slot, you know, basically the same mm-hmm. thing. And that's when they did all of the, you know, Capcom versus me, Capcom versus you, um, all those different. Ver- and there's heaps, like, because you've got CPS one stuff, you've got CPS two stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a few different versions of it. Um, but yeah, and so- that just goes to show too that it was. I mean, if it was built as a Neo Geo clone or whatever, you wouldn't have King of Fighters 98 coming in. I mean, this was just the arcade world, the way things worked back then. Everybody was going to these modular systems because it just made sense financially. Well, the you biggest... know, you could set up an arcade with 100 PGM motherboards in it and then rotate all your hat carts and all that kind of stuff around in it that's... without spending a fortune. Yeah, that's one of the biggest misconceptions about the PGM is people just call it a, a Neo Geo wannabe. And, and it's totally not like it's 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 totally completely different. 
Um, and it's sad because a lot of people go, oh, it's just a wannabe. You know, yeah. I don't want to get into this. I don't even want to look at it because, I, you know, it's, it's just a want, you know. And, and it detracts from the actual it, It's machine. really sad. And it, it, and it runs well. I mean, if you look at the, the video, which obviously everybody is, um, the, the sprites have been really well done. Like it, it It's extremely start high it's, quality. It's really, really smooth. And, and to do Oriental that, Legends it, is like watching a cartoon, like a Saturday morning ca cartoon or something. They, they and this, everything have, is so detailed. They must have, maybe they extracted the graphics from like a, a CPS 1 or a CPS 2 and, and used them. Like, because I wouldn't think they would redraw absolutely everything for the mm -mm. PGM. So I'm not sure where they got it from. Um, I will send you one day a um, the King of Fighters one. Um, hat awesome. card as well. It's just I'm running. I think I've only got two of them, so um, I'm, I'm well. Sort of I mean, only if you're okay parting with this stuff. Yeah, you know, no, uh, it's all it's all good. It's all good. You know, it's it's better to get it out there and, and play it. And you know, as you can see, you know, it is you know King of Fighters, but it it's it's special because it has the you know the Street Fighter people. Uh, and Street Fighter is huge. You know, like. That's probably you know, the biggest game. Do you have Street Fighter at the arcade? Do you have Street Fighter this at the arcade? Mm -hmm. you know? Do you have mm -hmm. hyper fighting? You know, championship edition. You know, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a it's a really really you know common game that, that that most people you know know about. So yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. This is awesome. I'll do. I'll feature. A, I'll do a stream featuring this one for sure. See if I can. I think it's like a three-hour game, isn't it? If you play it oh, start to finish. Yeah, it's 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 quite long. It, it really is quite long. That'd be a good one. And um, actually, there's quite a few games that are like that. The 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 King of Fire, Road of the Sword, the Gladiator. Um, that's definitely one that will take. I I think that's longer than three hours. Like, um, awesome. I think it's, it's a really really long game. Um, you know, so people would be paying like 30, 40 bucks to finish that in an arcade if you wanted to play the whole thing, oh, probably. Yeah. And the rest. Um, I mean, if you're putting two dollar coins in the machines, you know it doesn't take long before you get you know forty or fifty dollars going. Um, that's that's one of the cool things about having the free play arcade is that people can just pay the entry fee and mm -hmm. then they go. Oh yeah, I love that. They can play, you know, play whatever they want, and and it's it's actually quite funny because what you get, you get a lot of people they go in and then they keep pressing the credit button and they put like twenty credits in it, uh -huh. and then and then the machine stays on when they're done. Yeah, and then they walk away, and it's like, if you're putting coins in it, you'd never do that, because mm -hmm. you have to pay for every single credit that you use. Um, so, yeah, but, um, but no, this is one I thing. always, I have this weird thing where I'm still thinking like I was in, like, 1996 when I do that, because I'll be like, ooh, I want to go play Time Crisis, because it's free, and that used to be, like, a 75-cent game or whatever, you know? <laughs> But it's like it doesn't really matter if you're just paying your your ten bucks for the day or whatever. You can play whatever you want. Yeah, well, that's... but I still see like Rampage was my twenty five cent game back then. It's like oh, I don't want to play that because that was a cheap game. <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's um oh there we go. You change character. Yeah, I got Guile here. Yeah, so you can do that. But if you if you have a look at the graphics, they're still really well done. You know, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't jump around. It it you know. It's better. I mean, I I was playing Double Dragon three uh, last night, and going I had gone from PGM to Double Dragon three, and Double Dragon three just looks like such crap when you go from a game like this to it. It's so choppy, and there's so much slowdown, and there's so little animation in the sprites. I'm I'm actually surprised that that people haven't done. Well, I assume somebody's done some overclocking of the Double Dragon boards. Um, I yeah, do it's have... the first thing people look into when they get it, like me. But I, nobody's I... ever pulled it off, I don't think. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure one of the processes on there, I'm pretty sure, is a protected chip. And it's it's not just an off-the-shelf, it's got code inside it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's one of the Double Dragons does, or one of the CPUs on it. Because uh, I know I had a board many, many years ago, and, and it had an error when it does the startup tests. And, and yeah, I found out that, you know, it was a CPU that had extra code inside and couldn't just replace it. Um, so maybe that's why, they're, why they mm -hmm. can't be overclocked. I do have a, a um, I've got a bootleg um, Double Dragon board here that I was given um, from, from actually the guy who actually, that's another world record that we have. The guy for the world record of, um, 
Double Dragon is, is at the arcade as well, and he's one of our regulars as well. So that's another game that oh, we've awesome. got the world record on. Um, so Yeah, so uh, Jotego, who does FPGA stuff for Mr. Arcade Games, he's going to take on Double Dragon, and that was my question to him. I said, can you get rid of it? Can you... When you make your core, can you put an option in, you know, to remove the sprite limit or to overclock it? And he said he's going to do that. So, yeah, well, that, that should be cool. That should work really, really well. I mean, I yeah. wish it's probably one. Thing I'm I selling wish... my arcade board. Actually, I like. I want to get this thing out of here. It's just, <laughs> it's not enjoyable to me really with all that. Yeah, it's one of the one of the areas I'd like to get a little bit more into, and I think it's the way forward for a lot of, um, you know, making a. Not necessarily a, a, a PGM flash card, um, because obviously that's the ultimate goal, but just making, uh, you know, other boards for, for Fluffy's boards so mm -hmm. that you can actually run um, the like asset add-on, yeah. Because uh, that's, that's, that's really what you want. If you had that, then you could use these boards for, for basically any game. Um, and I think that would be really, really cool. Um, I know Fluffy's yeah. uh, mentioned it that because um, at the moment they only use the uh, 32 megabit uh, 27C322 um, chip, uh, which is only 32 megabit. The chips on real carts uh, are generally 64 megabit chips, uh, and at the moment, obviously, you can't put them in his his um, his cartridges. But he has talked about um, there's a few, a very few five volt. 64 megabit chips that exist. One's made by Intel. Um, they're rare. I do have quite a few of them here, but they do exist. And he's talked about doing a, a 64 meg version of his, of his board um, as well for some of the games that are a bit larger. Um, I also need to put a list together of possible games that can be that could be used on his boards as well. Um, plus, I was going to make a list of the ASIC games as well, so that it, you know for people to understand a little bit more about you know why we can't do this or, or what this does and you know etc etc a bit more of a background um yeah it's on my to-do list and i think it's very well needed because the questions do come up a lot and especially with fluffy's boards um yeah there's no real popular. list of what games work with fluffy's boards or which yeah. ones don't that would well, be it, good it, they're all right they were originally done for just the three cave shooters and that's all he really talks about and that's and that's fine i mean he's done an absolutely brilliant job um, yeah, and he even has know, like this. You can switch on. Uh, is it Katsui? Katsui, yeah, yeah. Katsui, you can you switch can... between arranged mode or uh, arcade version, which is really yep. cool. Yeah, you could do that. At, at the moment, on on the the test card that I've got. So I've got. See, so these are his board. These are Fluffy's boards that are obviously not populated. Um, these are a little bit newer. These are the original ones that he made. Um, and as you can see, I've populated them. Um, with the sockets and and um, and all the gear in them, um, but yeah, the, it's there's, there's a set of jumpers on there, and you can switch between the two different versions of Katsui, um, you know, without a problem. Or you mount a switch on it externally so that you can just switch yeah, that's what I've seen cart. people doing. Yeah, so that's that's a really common thing you can do that. But that's what Fluffy's boards were designed to do. That was that was his his goal was to make PCB so you didn't have to kill a real cart in order to do it that was the main thing and then running five volt only chips uh so that you weren't um damaging any 3.3 uh io driving um and, and he succeeded i mean they worked really well i mean i was not shocked but i, I was you know it only took him what a couple of months to, to do the boards mm -hmm. and, and they work you know you plug them in do all the roms and, and i mean okay there were a few teething problems um but yeah, they've been so well done, and, and he's actually sold. Uh, he did the first. It's either a run of a hundred or a run of yeah. two hundred, uh, and that's on the arcade forums. Um, and I, I believe he's going to do another run. Of yeah, he sold out that first hundred, which yeah, already it, you know it, saves a hundred games right there. Yeah, well, I've and, ordered, ordered quite a few, um, obviously. But um, yeah, if you're if you're interested in that, or, or even if you're just curious. Um, yeah, Fluffy's the guy to, to talk about it, and um, you know most of the stuff is in the forum, so you can actually read it in Arcade Projects. Uh, there is actually a forum now just for the PGM one, two, and three. Um, so if you pop into that group, um, you'll be able to read about Fluffy's boards, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, they were originally designed just for the three cave shooters, which they run absolutely perfectly, um, and I was really happy because. Um, some of the boards, the PGM uh, cart 
PCBs that I scan and put on my website. He used quite a few of those images to actually trace the tracks around uh, to actually help him make the cartridges. So I was really, really happy with that because, uh, you know, it's, it's been a huge plus. We've now got boards that we can almost do whatever we want with them uh, at the work um, that are well built, well designed. You know, if you've got an EPROM programmer or you've got a friend who's got one, you can build the three cave shooters. They're not hard. The EPROMs, you can get them on eBay. They're cheap. Uh, they don't have yeah. to be brand new um, EPROMs. There's even that site that will burn them for you if you send them the files or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the, the um, Buy I See Now um, yeah. will do it for you. Um, the only thing I'm a little bit um, cautious about doing the cave shooters is you might get one chip wrong and if you tell them to do the wrong file mm -hmm. you've got a set that doesn't work and it's like well which chip is it so mm -hmm. like if you're actually doing them yourself or you've got a friend who's got a programmer um, and, and there are programmers out I'm sure there's a programmer um, out there that was um, yeah a I got made in Canada uh, is it a G4 or G3X or something um, yeah, there was a really good, highly recommended one that I got for about 80 bucks that I sent to uh, Brazil to um, Victor Valela for Super Nintendo stuff that basically did everything. Yeah, so it's it's it, it is a little bit like if you've got I've got um, I've got a couple of mates who who want the uh, the cave shooters, and because I've obviously I've got an Epon programmer, I've I've had one for many many years. Um, Mine's quite expensive, so I don't recommend that you get the one that I have unless you're doing a lot of arcade boards or you're trying to run an arcade. And funnily enough, um, that's what I work as, so that worked out really, really well. Um, and I use it all the time. Uh, Mask Rock. Yeah, it's, e I'm, I have yeah. one coming from uh, Undammed to send me a really nice older one. And yeah, I just see, have this huge backlog of chips I need to burn just to convert things from Japanese to American and stuff like that. Yeah, It'll see, be really as useful. As, as long as it either has an adapter for 42 pin EPROMs or it has 40, 42 pins or 44 or 48. Um, the one I've got is, is 48, so I can just pop the, the 32 megabit EPROMs in. And, and those adapters are really cheap now, too. Yeah, they are. For and some of the more the, popular boards. EPROMs, like, there's a guy who I've been buying them from on eBay, and I think he does. I think it's like twelve dollars for ten chips. Oh, nice! Yeah, and they're a hundred nanoseconds, so they're fine. The speed's all good. Um, that's another little, uh, not a cheat, but a little thing to know is with EPROMs, they do slow down with age. Um, so it's always better to get a slightly faster chip um, because it's um, because they do slow down with age. So I'm unboxing another cart here. This one, oh, it's Photo Y2K. Ah, is yeah, that a yeah. puzzle one? It's yeah. This is the. It's also called same same. So this should be the one where you've got. If you want to talk about IGS or something. Yeah. Well, um, we talked earlier how I've got different videos right and stuff about the PGM uh, related sort of things, and and also you know just arcade related stuff. So um, if you do have questions and and, and stuff like that, um, you know you can uh, you can contact me through obviously my website. Um, Etc. Uh, and, and through obviously through YouTube and that sort of thing. But a lot of questions uh, are answered in the videos that I do. Um, I also, you know, if, if people have, you know, if enough people ask me a question about the PGM and, you know, um, I need to make another video, that's all cool too. I'm, I'm very into, you know, trying to, to get stuff done that, you know, that people really, really want um, to, to watch and, and, and to know about. Um, but yeah, the PGM, um, I've got like, you know, which motherboard to buy, what carts to buy. Um, I want to do one probably with the games. The games aren't very well. There are some good videos, but nothing really, really good. Like nothing like Smoke Monster does. Um, and I think with like the capture card that he's got uh, and doing it straight into the computer and, and recording that sort of thing, I think that would look really, really good for a lot of these games. Plus, it would give people... If you show something in high quality, people go, oh, wow, is this what this produces? If you do it in low quality, they just go, oh, yeah, it's just another game. Um, and, and, you know, people can ignore it. But, um, no, it's a, it's a cool system. Um, you know, we've shown off quite a few games tonight, which is pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, there are, there are there's meant to be around 30 titles, um, but there, there's more than that. Um, and then you've got your, your different regions. 
Um, the other thing, just cover it just a little bit. Um, the motherboards and the cartridges are not region locked. There's no region locking, so you can plug any game into any motherboard and it will run. So you don't have to worry about region locks at all, because that's that's you know there are a lot of systems that do have that. Plus, with the battery on board leaking, um, you don't need a battery on board for the motherboard to run. Um, so cutting it off, desoldering it, that's all cool. Um, I do cover that in one of my videos as well, but just so that everybody knows, um, you can get rid of the battery and um, it doesn't stop the board from burning it, it runs. This, it doesn't need the battery, just get rid of it and, and, and save yourself the hassle of um, having to repair the board later. So yeah, yeah so that's... I, uh, I just threw mine away. Well, I kept the battery because it actually still had a perfect charge, but I, I took it out of the system following your advice yeah it because is. yeah like i don't need any of that bookkeeping stuff anyways i mean people are going to want i know people's natural tendency is going to be like oh but i want to preserve the battery but really it doesn't do anything for pgm so no it just it just does the bookkeeping basically um i'm pretty sure most games don't even use the area for um saving high scores i know there was i don't i can't remember if it's one of the cave conversions or it's a different game and and you put i think it's dip eight if you turn dip eight on 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 this one game i think it does save the scores um but that's the only one i know about i don't know about any other games um saving scores or, or doing that definitely demon front doesn't or i can't get it to do it because i know uh i did end up doing demon front at work so basically instead of soldering the the battery onto the pcb i put leads on it and just ran it around so that it was you know completely away so if it does decide to pass out um it won't kill anything because it's it's not on the board anymore um but i've never been able to get to save a score with that i i don't think it does unless i'm missing something um so yeah so i just pulled out a game that has like a beetle on the cover and a butterfly uh, beetle um i'll pop it in here uh, which one's that that's is that another one okay it's hard to remember every single car just because there's so many different versions of it mm -hmm. um, which makes it yeah it makes it hard to remember which is which um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's the same same game, so it's a similar type game. I don't think it's as um, yeah, looks, yeah. It looks sure a bit uh, safer. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not. I don't think that's one of the ones with a little bit more of an adult content. I think that one's pretty okay. Um, oh, the other thing people may have noticed is the cartridges, the cases themselves. Um, the early stuffs uh, is is non-transparent red. Um, but the later stuff is transparent. Yeah, this one, it looks like it's a solid, non-transparent. You know, putting LEDs in stuff and, you know, doing all that sort of thing. The PGM, you can totally do that because there's, there's enough space in there to put LEDs. Plus, the, most of the games are the red clear cases. Um, so, yeah. That would be cool. Can you light up the... Is there... A, yeah, I guess you could just pull it from the 12-volt line, couldn't you, and put some LEDs inside the carts. I probably won't do that. Um, not, but that would be kind of cool. Not on the 12-volt. Um, the 12-volt uh, doesn't go to it's the cartridges. Connected. It's not oh, okay. It's just for the, um, the, um, the sound, sound amplifier. Or something. Yeah. yeah, it's just for the sound amplifier. So plus five, yeah, you can definitely get plus fives in the cartridge. That's that's not a problem. It's, it's there. It's easy to find. There's two... Oh, well, you would have seen it when you opened your cart. There's the... Uh, the main capacitors um, down near the edge, um, you know, that's five volts there. So it's pretty easy to get five volts, and if you want to run LEDs around and, and all that sort of thing. So yeah, so this is this is yeah, so this is like same same, um, where I'm pretty sure you do the differences um, between the mm -hmm. two pitches. But yeah, but I think this one is yeah, this one's a little bit more G-rated. But yeah, you can see the little. It beetle. looks like G-rated, but like it could go freaky or something yeah, if I get to it further. <laughs> again, I've never finished this game, so I mean, it, it's quite possibly that it could. Um, that would be awesome if it did, because it's totally selling itself as a kids' game from that attract sequence. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Like it, it, it looks, you know, be harmless and you know. Um, but um, oh, here we go. Well, that didn't last very long, did it? <laughs> <laughs> 
So yes, yeah, so obviously this one must do as well. It's just I haven't probably played it enough. I've, I've never noted, never noticed it. Um, but yeah, there's a little spidery guy that yeah tells you when to go, and then you've got the little beetle up the top that eats the time chart. Um, so yeah, so you're popping the same thing. Differences between the the two um, the two pitches, and obviously it's a, another cartridge, so it's a different game, um, different images, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there is there is a couple like this um, definitely, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose we'll soon find out whether you know how quickly it gets a little bit more adult. Um, but yeah, again, another funny card to play. Um, this one isn't super common. Um, it's probably in the middle. Um, and and the reason I know that, I've only got probably three or four of them cards, and that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, so generally something, if I've, if I've only got a couple, then it's, it's usually quite, uh, quite uncommon. Um, so yeah, but no, you can... You can get... Um, I don't know whether you're going to do, you may do another video on, you know, on buying motherboards and, and carts and, you know, where to get, you know, good deals and all that sort of thing. Um, but if they're definitely out there, you can definitely get a, a running system plus a cart for like, you know, 100 to probably 130 $140. So, um, yeah, so it's not expensive. No, it just seems like a great value for how powerful it is, to me at least. Because usually, I mean, if you're talking $100 arcade games, it's usually kind of... If you're buying them working, it's kind of the bottom of the barrel. Well, you don't typically jump in with something as high of quality as this. There's, there's not, there's not a lot of arcade stuff like really high quality stuff you can buy for a hundred. I mean, no, I know for the like just to go back to the Neo Geo, just because that's easy and I've bought quite a few carts. Um, the Metal Slug series um, for the Neo Geo, I've paid what um, three, three, four hundred. You know, for for some of the metal slug cartridges, you know, and that's that's huge. Like that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm sure there's there's probably people out there who are going, oh, I don't know if I want to spend that sort of money. What happens if I don't like the games? Um, you know, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, you can spend stupid money on Neo Geo carts. Um, even yeah. for, you know, for the MVS is what we're talking about. I mean, the AES stuff is already. Stupid, stupidly expensive, but the MVS some of it. Like, there's one. Um, I think it's called Magician Lord. It's a, a yeah, rare. Yeah, that was Geo. the pack in originally for the. Yeah, it got. They didn't end up making too many of them, um, and it became. It's it's not super rare, um, but it's. Um, yeah, it, I I know I looked it up. Oh, I wasn't too too long ago. There's another game called Cyber Lip, which wasn't a launch title. I think it came a little bit after the launch, but it goes for stupid money now um, as well. Definitely the English version of the carts uh, definitely go for like five, six, seven hundred dollars, which, which for a beginner is, is a lot of money. I mean, you can buy this. Um, the motherboards are really, really reliable. Um, I've not had any major like there's no major flaws, um, you know, with the motherboards other than the, you know the batteries and 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 stuff like that, but in my buying guides I say to buy the, the Rev9 or Newell which shouldn't have any battery issues so you can mm -hmm. you know if you buy a Rev9 or Newell you won't have any problems with the battery because it's you know you just and if you buy it known working too you probably know yeah. it doesn't have any battery damage for the most part yeah for the um, and you can fix it yeah for the damaged boards um, if you are into tinkering and repairing board gems uh, there's two or three different mods that basically is all you need to do and and most um, boards that have that the batteries leaked out on uh, Can be fixed that way. So I do have a video on that. So if you're into tinkering and you want to get a board fairly cheap um, a Little bit of a story my first PGM that I bought um, It was it was five dollars Australian. So it was like two dollars nice. <laughs> uh, I bought it years and years and years ago i didn't really know what it was i I'd, I'd, I'd seen it before but never really looked into it um bought the board didn't work the battery had just gone everywhere um you know it didn't work and i spent i think it was like three or four months and and finally got it to run and i was so happy that i'd finally got it to run um and that was when i started with the pgm and i fell in love with it and it, you know it runs really well and 
yeah, it is a really great system, and and it's not expensive. Um, and I think that's one of the cool things because a lot of stuff that's uncommon or on the little bit of a rare side um, in arcade world um, is usually really, really, really expensive. Yeah, and, and powerful too. The more power you get, it seems like the prices go way up, and you get so much bang for your buck out of the PGM. That's that's the thing, you know. Like I, I really. You know, like, I'm not going to put a guarantee that I guarantee that every single person who buys a PGM is going to love it, um, you know, because there's, there's obviously going to be some people that, that won't like something. But it is a really cool system. Um, you know, it, it's not that expensive. And, and most people have never heard of it. So, you know, that's, mm-hmm. a, that's another rarity um, about the PGM is that most arcade gear that you go and buy or, or stuff that you know about, it's already known. The games are dumb. They're common. Everybody knows about it. Knows this game for it's played this, played that. But with the PGM, you know, most people have never played it, never done anything. Um, that's is that another? That's a sealed. Yeah, that's another sealed kit. Yeah, so that, thank you. A, this is a third yeah. brand new PGM game I've opened I, tonight. Unbelievable. The, I think this is two. Yeah, Dragon World two thousand and one. I think from memory. Mm-hmm. You'll That's see. What it, looks like. it has two thousand. It should have two thousand one written on the um, mm-hmm. on the label. So that's yeah. So that's that's the last Dragon World that was written for the PGM. That was the last cut that they did for that series. Um, cool. So you've got two, uh, and you've got three, and and now you've got two thousand and one, which is obviously four, uh, but they called it two thousand and one. So obviously it was released around two thousand and one. Um, so it was one of the last cards released um, for the system. Never stick those stickers onto everything, onto anything ever. But um, they're really cool to have. I, I really enjoy um, yeah. getting the, the little extra bonuses that you know that you can get. And um, oh, I forgot to send it. I was. Um, uh, I knew I forgot to do something today. Um, I had some other <laughs> stuff which I haven't actually talked to you about yet um, that, I'm, that I'm also sending to you um, and I could have just given it away if I had a said. But I've got, I've got some artwork for one of the games I'm going to be sending and I've got to remind myself to find it because I've got, I've got a full banner of, of some of them, like original, never used. Uh, in plastic, and I've I've got a couple for this one game, and I know it's a game that you'd like, so I'll have to try and find oh, cool. uh, where it is. So I won't give away what that game is yet, or else that'll give away. Uh, um, but it's yeah, it's a, it's a cool game, and I'm sure you'd like to to play it. Awesome, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. And I mean, like my arcade collection just exploded. I mean, like I can I said this when I was restoring, like when I was recapping those carts, people are like. Oh, why are you recapping cartridges? It's kind of crazy. I'm like, well, I treat every single PGM cartridge the same way as getting a whole new game. You know, to me, it's that important. And uh, getting a new arcade game, to me, the first thing I do is I recap them. I clean them up really nicely. You know, I find a box for them and get some ESD safe bubble wrap and everything and get them in my lineup. And I'm doing the same thing with these uh, PGM games one by one. Because I really do consider every cartridge to be... You know, Double Dragon, it's a double gigantic system, and it was a big pain in the butt, and I cleaned the heck out of it, spent a week on it, and I kind of, I like these PGM games way more than that, so like cleaning them up and recapping them, it just seems like the right thing to do for them. It, it, it definitely is. Um, I mean, the motherboards have to be recapped, um, and that's one thing um, I haven't announced. I think it's in some of my videos, maybe, um, but I'm going to do a... More of a helping the PGM community or, or helping new people get into the PGM. Um, I'm going to uh, sell some motherboards um, that have already been, that I've recapped. Um, probably also have the stereo mod, which I'm yet to finalize. Um, and, and obviously, the, you know, any battery damage has been fixed. Um, but most of them, I'm going to try and make them the Rev 14s, which, which never have any battery damage because they had the coin cell. So I'm going to be selling some of those. Um, I'll probably start at a few, like maybe five or six to start with and just see what the interest is in the community. Um, but that is one oh, that thing. that would be awesome um, for people to buy them already, yeah, and, and be already recapped, yep. stereo modded from you. Yeah, yeah. Would so, be cool. Um, and, and that will help me 
uh, with my website, getting more cartridges to, to also help the community as well. Um, but yeah, they'll be ready to rock and roll. No messing around, nothing to do with the batteries, all good. Stereo mod, um, which obviously I've got to finish uh, finish that. But yeah, completely recapped with high quality caps. Um, so there's no skimping on, on any of that stuff as well. Um, so yeah, so when it comes to recapping, people will probably think, oh, you know, why are you doing that? Why are you doing a cartridge for, you know? But the same thing yeah. still applies. They still do the same job. Caps do the same job, you know? They, they, they still... Yeah, and everything. I found... I mean, the PGM caps, they're all really good, actually. They all tested fine. But, I mean, the ESR was kind of high on a few of them. And I can put... You know, I'm replacing generic caps with Panasonic or Nishikon or Rubicon that are rated for 105 degrees for five to 10,000 hours. Like, though, it's basically making the cart indestructible at this point. Like, why not? I mean, I have... You have hundreds of these on hand anyways. You might as well do it. That's how I feel. Yeah, it's... It, it, it is doable. I, um, you know, like, if you think about it, because if you think about how old the cartridges are, so the cartridge you've got now was released in 2001. Okay. So it's 18 years old. So the caps in it are already 18 years old. You know? Mm -hmm. um, you look at the recapping of chassis, which is highly important. You know, you've got the same thing, but these are even older, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, so it is worth doing, especially if you've got the gear to do it. Um, if you've got the gear to do it, great. If you don't, find a friend um, or someone who does have the gear. Um, I really it? love... I enjoy recapping. I don't know. For you, it probably feels like work. But for me, it's like... It's um. it's making something mine is how I feel. So I've got a new arcade game that came in that I fixed or whatever. Like that's I recap it, and then it just feels like brand new, you know? It. I, I enjoy it because it's... Because most of the time, you're repairing something. So you're mm -hmm. taking something that doesn't work or, or is out of spec, um, and that's that's a another thing is, is that you know a lot of people go oh the chassis works I plug it in it works you know, but you may not be able to adjust it properly or the geometry's out or it's got pin cushion or it just looks terrible, um, you know. So it it is a huge thing to, to bring stuff back to spec. Uh, plus it's enjoyable because you're taking something that doesn't work. Uh, and and fixing it and and obviously I get a lot of enjoyment um, out of that and, and obviously you do as well um, so for me it's good and, um, and and then you know with all the bad caps that you pull out and they're absolutely terrible it's like you know it, yeah it and you and I both do and, that and, thing where like I pull I mean I'm gonna I do a shotgun recap of everything just because I like doing it but I always even though I'm replacing them all I'll put them every single one on the ESR meter and just see where they were. And like yeah. you do that too, I think. Yeah, and I do. You, yeah. It's kind of crazy. I mean, most of them are fine, but one in ten or one in twenty caps are off, and yeah. one in a hundred uh, yeah. is like way off. Like you know, like the board wasn't working right with that on there. Yeah. No, it's it's Which it is a good feeling to do recapping. Um, I'm just very lucky at work because I have got so many different caps. Um, you know, recapping's not a problem. Um, I think that's. I think that's why people get a little bit nervous about recapping is, is just because um, the sheer number of, of some caps on some stuff, like with the, the chassis and stuff, you know, you can have 20, 30 different caps. Uh, and, I, and I think people get a little bit um, cautious about it is when you start to get to multi-layer boards and that's where people really struggle because you really need uh, a good desoldering gun, which I'm pretty sure you've got an older Hacko. One, I, I use think. an I use a Hacko knockoff and a Weiwei four seventy four A plus plus, and then I, I replaced all of the the filters and everything in it with Hacko stuff. Yeah, no, I've got the uh, well, I talk about it in my video. I've got the latest one, the um, FR. I think it's two hundred one or two hundred two or three hundred one, three hundred two, and and it's an absolute dream to use. It is so well made. Too, yeah. It works so well. Um, it works so well that I have to have one for home. Like, I'm going to have to buy one because they just work so well and it makes recapping any, especially multi-layer boards uh, and, and doing mods to multi-layer boards. Um, it is so, so handy um, to do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the thing that I recommend to people, like anybody who wants to do serious... I mean, if you have a bunch of consoles... You should get a desoldering station. I mean, it's the best investment. If you think of the time that it saves you compared to braid or a solder sucker, wouldn't you kind of agree with that? Like, it's oh, it's yeah. just such a dream to use them compared to Later. doing it the old way. You're kidding me, right? No. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It is a good way to do it. Um, I recommend. Sorry. Yeah, clearly. Okay. I've got uh, Escaluda going in here. So now we're getting to the real, like, to me, the gems of the PGM. These uh, shoot 'em ups. Escaluda. Uh. uh Katsui and Dodonpachi Daiojo, they're actually all on the uh, Xbox 360. That's how I always played them. But, I mean, playing them on real hardware is just insane to think that I own these games. I mean, because cave games are outrageous, and games of this power are outrageous, too. Yeah, that's that was one of the biggest stumbling blocks um, for the cave shooters. Is they were just so... Ex and they still are. If you go going out and buy... Yeah. If you want to buy the original boards... Um, you're looking at, you know, more than a grand minimum. You know, I've, I've seen them up around the three grand mark. So it's, it's, you know, you can you can pay a lot of money. So being able to get these cave games now through uh, Fluffy's PCBs, which I've shown the red ones, um, being able to do it through that is 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 just absolutely great because you don't have to spend three four hundred dollars. Uh, and I think actually yeah. the cut the pricing of i'm hoping the pricing of the, the cart um, conversions and and obviously the boards because someone's going to copy um fluffy's boards and obviously make them out of china um yeah so i'm assuming that the Just market's going to get a little bit cheaper i would hope um, for the original but that's cool boards. i mean i assume that's what fluffy kind of wants i mean if it's a it's a preservation project really and he can't be making much money off the actual pcbs so even if they do this in china it's kind of cool that you're saving the actual carts that's that's the biggest thing and, and that's that's the most useful thing is that you are actually you're not using donor carts anymore the only thing that's left to get around the shell yeah exactly is the shells um, where do you get shells from what do you do with the shell mm -hmm. and at the moment most people or the way I'm recommending it is that people get the old the common really common cheap carts so like yeah Dragon World 2 Dragon World 3 yeah. um, they're usually pretty easy to get and they're usually fairly cheap uh, just get some of those uh, and I actually sent a whole heap to Fluffy um, a while back so that he had a whole heap of shells that he could use. Um, so that, that helped him out just to say thanks for making the boards because the boards are, you know... Yeah, that's cool. You cool. sent him like 10 boards or something? 10 games, yeah, 10, actually. 10 yeah, or 12, 10 or 12 carts. Um, I stripped out all the boards, so they were just plastic, so they were a bit lighter. Um, but, um, but no, I sent him those and, he, and he's used them in the end. You know, he was really happy with that, and I was glad I was able to do something to, you know, to say thank you about the boards. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I assume, I mean, eventually someone will probably make like either a plexiglass solution, or I mean, three D printed shell. But that, I mean, that would be kind of expensive, but it would be cool I th if the, somebody could make a full repro. The only, the only just no, oh, not really disappointing point. But one of the points is at the moment, I'm pretty sure buying a cheap cart and using its case. I know that's it's not cheaper like, than a 3D print. <laughs> yeah, is is cheaper yeah. than you know, like if if you were gonna get them done to make them cheap enough, you know, that it was worth to buy. Um, you know, even if it was the same price as a cheap cart, that would be fine. Um, but yeah, you'd have to get you know probably 3D molds made up, uh, use injection molding or, or something. That yeah, we really need injection molded shell yeah, probably and, in the and, end, but that's, that's like ten grand or something for somebody to do. I'm guessing. It's, yeah, it's a lot of money. I mean, you've got you've got not just the design to draw, uh, but then you've got to actually get the molds made. Uh, mm -hmm. You're probably going to need and get it right. You're going to need at least two molds, probably three, because you've got the cart top and bottom. Because the top and bottom are different. Um, so you'd have to have those two, and then there's a, uh, a spacer bar um, that goes in between the two PCBs, and that's another plastic part. So there's three different plastic parts. I'm assuming you'd either have to do two or three mm -hmm. um, actual molds to do it. Um, but people have done it. I mean, the there was a new new cases for the uh, Amigas was done up on a um, Kickstarter project, and they did exactly yeah. that. They designed new plastic. I mean, we could probably do a Kickstarter for PGM stuff. Like... People really, the people who are into PGM are really into it. I mean, I'd throw a hundred bucks towards a, ki a Kickstarter for a shell if somebody were going to do that. Oh, I think, yeah, I, I, I would too, but I, I'm not sure who, like, I mean, I can donate games or carts, you know, to anybody who's mm -hmm. 
you know, if there's somebody out there or somebody watching this who thinks, oh, yeah, you know, I'm good at 3D drawing and, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, I mean, I definitely donate some carts uh, towards it so that you've actually got something to, to model off. That's, you know, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. Because um, I think that would that's the ultimate way of doing it, is to be able to make your own plastic carts, then you get the boards, and, and then you're basically everything's kosher, and, you know, the prices of mm -hmm. Demon Front will come down because they're no longer being yeah. as, as donors, which, which is... You know, because at the moment they're just yeah, deer in front's way too expensive. Um, it's so crazy. It's just been a couple of years since it went nuts. The price, because I remember the last time I looked. I mean, it was around a hundred, and I don't know why I didn't buy it back then. But I think I was waiting. See, I got my PGM motherboard back when there was uh, Dark Soft had said maybe one day I'll do a PGM multi cart. And so I just grabbed a really cheap, I mean, they were dirt cheap back then, uh, motherboard. And then I didn't really have any games for it, just up, up until I started talking to you recently. Yeah. And then I picked up these four, first four games just like a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's. Um, I mean, a, a multi would be would be really, really cool, and, and there's no getting away with that. But then you're still left with the same question. You're going to have to make plastics. I mean, if you're selling a yeah. multi board, you know, like like the um, you know, like all the other flash cartridges you get for different systems. You know, they all come with a case, and you know they're a complete unit. You plug it in, and you know everything's cool. Um, so if someone was going to do that, you'd ha you'd have to do you'd have to get plastics made somehow, um, because otherwise you couldn't really sell it. You'd have to sell it to enthusiasts um, to get their own carts. So um, yeah, I, I I think it's doable. Um, you know, I, I I it's not. Plastics aren't too bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they were probably injection molded to start with. Um, and, you know, like, as I said, you know, I, I don't have a problem sending some people carts if they want to draw them up. Um, you know, exa exactly. I wonder if I could ask uh, Colin Gall if he would be up for that. I could see. Although, like you said, you're still going to have, in the end, it might still be cheaper just to buy the um, actual real cart. Than yeah, having I, a 3D print because this is going to be a fifty, sixty dollar print, I imagine, if you were getting yeah. it through like Shapeways or something. Yeah, I, I, I really think probably at the moment, it yeah, it's cheaper just to buy a common cart and 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 just basically take the take the boards out and and rep um, repurpose it um, because yeah, I think a 3D print you've got the bottom and the top, which are probably where all the plastic's going to be, uh, and yeah, I would have thought it would be like maybe fifty or sixty dollars for each side. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. or something like that because there's a lot of plastic. Um, some of the um, some of the integrated features in the cart don't necessarily have to be there. Um, like with the vents, you could make the vents go from one side to the other. They don't need to be curved. Um, you could make the cartridges a lot uh, cartridge shells uh, a lot more sim um, simplified. Uh, and, and I, think I wonder if you could make them a little better for heat maintenance too, because they do get pretty warm. Yeah, they do. Um, they they do get warm, especially with the the ones that have got the ASIC chips in them. Um, they do. They actually do get quite warm because the ASIC does get quite warm. Um, and that's what I was like. If I was going to send a case to somebody to to draw up or whatnot, I was going to say, hey, you know, you can make these vents go the whole way of the cartridge mm -hmm. uh, instead of doing the the scalloping that they've got at each edge, uh, mm -hmm. and that would help with you know keeping the carts cooler and um, and make the cart a lot easier and cheaper to make. Um, I think if you bought enough of them, um, you could probably get a good price, but I, I think you probably have to get a lot made um, um, anyway. But um, yeah, but it has. I mean, you look at the the shock cases for the Neo Geo carts. Um, you know, they didn't exist, and a guy made them and then you know, mm -hmm. sells them. Um, but the last time I looked, they weren't exactly cheap though. But the principles no, there, pe people have done it. Thing. You know taken it off you know use kickstarter or, or whatever and 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 made the you know made it a reality so i think it's definitely doable um i suppose you just need to get someone who's you know probably a little bit more passionate about the pgm and, and and wants to to help the community as well not just you know i can do drawing and i'll and i'll draw it up for you someone who's got a bit more mm -hmm. passion about it I, I think you probably need somebody like that um, and, and there's heaps of those people out in the arcade field. I mean, that's one of the things is that yeah. a lot of people who are into arcade gear are very passionate about it. And, um, yeah, the, there is a lot of people out there. Hmm. And the, the amount of sprites on the screens for this stuff is just unreal. 
I know, this like, is it's, insane. It's, it's just, there's so many bombs, like, I really... It's, it just shows you how powerful the system is, and I think it's only yeah. got... I think there's only one megabit of um, SRAM uh, used for VRAM, for the display chip. It, it hasn't got a lot of memory um, attached Just super to tweaked. It. Um, but it does run quite quick. I think it's around 33 to 40 meg, the video processor, um, for the video. Uh, but it, it also has a pallet RAM as well. So it's got your video RAM and pallet RAM as well. Um, and it runs really quick. Like, I think the RAM's like... I think it's 10, 10 or 12 nanosecond. So it's 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 wow. really, really going yeah. using the SRAM quite quickly. Uh, so, yeah. It, uh... This, ga this game is like a roller... These sh All three cave shooters are like a, ro a roller coaster ride that you're on. I mean, you have to just... Well, they, they did skip. Streaming them is not a great idea. It's like they, you got to turn your brain, half your brain off. They didn't skip on <laughs> anything. Um, that was something they definitely went in. They went in and said, hey, you know, we want to create some good shoes, which they're known for. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, PGM probably. I, that's the only little story I don't know is, is how um, Cave uh, became. That's what I was wondering, how they PGM. came to PGM hardware. Yeah, it's it's... There may be info out somewhere, but I've never I've never read any of it. It, it probably is out there somewhere because they were with uh, a different company called Atlas, and mm -hmm. Atlas did a lot of their boards. and And that's a, a little hint. Um, if you want to make your own cave boards, um, Atlas released their own games on the same hardware, so you can actually convert, can convert some them. of the the earlier cave boards, uh, the Atlas ones, into the cave. So that's another little thing. But I, I don't know if I read it, one of, uh, listened to one of your videos. There was someone doing an FPGA on the... Is it on the Mister? Yeah. For, yeah, they're uh, making... Well, they did... Um, they have a Cave Generation 1 FPGA. And I, apparently it's up and running with Dude Pachi already. Yeah, well, that's... And uh, they're bringing it to Mister now. And it's yeah, totally... Cool. The first game is done now, so... And they're going to do all the Cave first-gen games on it, which is going to be oh, just wow. killer. That'd be really, really cool. It's going to be the most impressive core so far, I think, when it's done. And it's just some lone wolf guy who's doing it. Yeah. See, another Come guy, around. you know, another guy who's, who's passionate about it. I'm sure he knows about the PGM or has a PGM. Um, yeah, you know, probably. It's, it's very, very, you know, cave-heavy year, so... Uh, but, yeah, you just look at the sprites. Like, that's the thing. is like, you've got all these sprites. It's not slowing down. The only slowdowns that happen are actual slowdowns that the actual game does... Um, mm -hmm. you know, intentionally. But, I mean, you know, there's just so many sprites on the screen. Everything's spinning around. It's just, yeah, it's very, very... I find them very, very hard to play, but they're still very, very enjoyable. Yeah, they're the kind of games where I would love to be, like, an expert at them one day. But it just got to practice more. Yeah, well, now that you've got them, um, I mean, I suppose the the next sort of thing. I, I know, you know, the, where you're living is not not very big, not a lot of space. But I, I suppose the next thing would be to actually, you know, get some sort of um, arcade machine or a candy cab or or, or something yeah. like that, and actually, you know, play them on a on a real machine. Because I mean, obviously, that's the ultimate way to play them. I, I'd love to have like uh, Blast City or something would be the ultimate for my space. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've do, got a couple, uh, I've got, I got four low boys, so they, um, they don't cool. take up a lot of room, um, and yeah, so I've got two verticals and two horizontals, um, nice. and then I just rotate the games around if I'm, one runs Demon Front, and I just leave it at that, because one of the, um, one of the kids, uh, likes to play Demon Front, so I normally leave that in one of my machines, and then I just toggle around other games that I'm interested in at the time and, and want to play. But um, yeah, I really it's... like uh, Modern Vintage Gamer just did his game room tour, and he has a Blast City and a Mini Cute, and he has the Mini Cute set up as his vertical cab. And I thought that was brilliant for a small space because then you've got two cabs, but it's not like full size cabs taking up your whole room. And plus, the Blast City can do 30 kilohertz and 15. Which is nice. Yeah, does it do 25 as well? I assume so. I don't think it's tri-sync, no. I think no. it's just 15 and 30. 15 and 31. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, that's common. There's a lot of... Um, uh, m most of the Naneo chassis that we work with um, over here, and, and obviously there'd be some in, the, in America as well, um, they're dual, but they're dual 
they do 15 and they do 25. So for you like your um, Daytona and um, Sega Rally, oh, and, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, all those games that ran it at 25, um, the same chassis will do a 15 and or a 25. So um, I just got games. my. F I have like. 50 games, but I just got my first VGA game, Arcana Heart Full. Yeah, I watched... You had a... Oh, what video was that? I watched a video where you were... Uh, I think you unpacked it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember which one it was, but it was definitely one of your videos. Because um, you were talking about whether it does VGA uh, through the finger or if it was on the connector. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, it's a weird connector. one. It's like JAMA, but it does it through the, through the JAMA edge, it does the VGA. Yeah, that's that's more uncommon. Normally, they just put a VGA plug in mm -hmm. and, and you do it straight from that. Um, and and the Jama finger is just obviously the inputs. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of games like that. Like a lot a lot of the um, uh, even the JVS stuff um, that converts to the Jama boards uh, for the pinouts. Um, you know, you use the video straight out of the machine, and then all the inputs go straight into the Jama finger and. Um, you know, is, is normal, like a normal Jama cabinet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, my, my house is so small. Right now I'm like lucky to even have this PVM. Like that was, it took a lot of persuasion <laughs> for me to get that approval. Yeah, well I, I'm, I'm not allowed to have any more arcade machines. Um, not mm -hmm. really meant to have any more boards and stuff either, but I still do, but not not a lot. Um, I mainly only collect at the moment, my main collection is obviously PGM cartridges, um, you know, obviously, uh, and, and that's really the only area, that's the main area that I'm collecting at the moment, I'm, I'm not. Um, PGM is so much easier to manage than normal arcade stuff, because it's just a cart for the most yeah, part. I mean, my, that's, minus the single board games are kind of bigger, but... Yeah, and, and that's really, really cool, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, let me switch over to Donan Pachi, and we'll call that the last game of the night. Sounds good. And it's the game I'm the worst at, probably. Yeah, just give them a... Mm -hmm. and, and remembering patterns and, and doing all mm -hmm. that, it, it you know, becomes quite a complex game to, to try and finish. But to play is, is very, very fun. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then that's that's really really cool. You don't have to be a world record holder. You can just play games for fun, and I think that's you know that's the cool thing. And as you know, as we've mentioned, it doesn't have to cost an absolute fortune to have some really good looking games. Yeah, I um, just can't believe I never in my I never in my whole arcade collecting career thought I would own a cave game. Just because every time you see one go for sale, it's just insane nowadays. I mean, and some of them are uh, five thousand dollars plus. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so to have the actual games here is pretty it, special it really like the the cave shoot they're just so expensive and 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 they're the last boards um that i'm probably like i may not even be able to buy them um the because originals. obviously as, yeah. as things get older those boards are getting more expensive and i mean all i want mm -hmm. them for is for scanning them in um yeah. you know for, for completeness but they're just so expensive and it's even faulty ones i saw a a faulty yeah. one and I kid you not, it went for, it was either a grand or a grand and a half US. Yeah, you're, was, we're getting to that point now. And broke. And I've faulty. seen Broken Turtles, T TMNT, go for like three, four hundred dollars. Like, yeah. it's insane nowadays. Yeah, like, it's coming, the, it's beyond what I could have afforded starting out for sure. It is, it's cra it really, really is crazy. Um, oh, the other interesting thing to note about this, this has the... Uh, black and white version, doesn't it? If I remember correctly, there is two versions for it. The white label and yeah. the black label. Are they? How do I? How do you switch between those on here? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I know some carts you can't see. You meant to have a switch, but I I thought okay. that there was a boot option when you boot, um, that you could change it, or there's an option in the settings menu that changes it. Um, okay, let me but see. I might be wrong. I haven't. I've the only ones I've played are the ones that are either black label or white label. Um, I've never had one that that you know that did both, or that I could figure out how to make it do both. But I assume um, it exists because it's it's not just a ROM hack um, mm -hmm. that, that somebody's done. The, the two versions do exist. Um, oh, I, I should show too. Uh, so I did some labels. 
for uh, PGM games because I wasn't super happy with the labels that are out there. I mean, there was actually a really good set by someone, but they were lower res. And uh, I've got those here. I can pull those up. So I made just... I'm going to have these printed by my friend PBO Land from uh, the Atari Age forums. And he'll have these available for people if you want these for like five bucks each to have them uh, professionally printed and cut. And uh, I did one for all three games. I basically, the Dodon Pachi Daiojo is just an exact copy of one that was out there. I just did it in high res and I added some text. And then I made my own Escaluda one kind of based on the same persons. And then I started from scratch with Ketsui, which is what I've got pulled up here right now just to show people. Yeah, the custom labels, that's that's another big area that a lot of people have been doing work in. And again, because the, the single PCBs don't have cartridge stickers, um, you know, there was never any official stickers ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and yeah, I mean, if you can get them printed and get them cheap for, you know, five bucks a, a sticker, that's pretty cheap. Yeah, I wanna, I'm going to send these all to him, and then I'll also put the files up, like the TIFF files, so that people could print them at home if they wanted to. Yeah, no, they look, they look really, really nice. I, I, it, there are a lot of people doing it, which is great, mm -hmm. um, because there's lots of different labels for the same game, and it's like, oh, yeah, okay, this one's, you know, you like this. I was this surprised sort of. at how hard it is, because I do, I've done, like, 340 different game covers for uh, Aurora, which is the Xbox 360 uh, service. Like, if you mod your 360 and you connect it through Unity... You get your covers automatically through Aurora or through Xbox or through uh, yeah through Aurora. Yeah. And so I've some I've made 340 covers, and I'm really good at game covers, but making cart labels for the end of the label is just absolutely the worst format to work in on Earth because of the shape of them. And it took me like a, a couple weeks now to make just these three to where I'm happy with them because you basically have to do everything on your own from scratch. Because it's such a weird... Unless you're stretching the aspect ratio or something, which I don't like to do. It's hard to get it looking good. Yeah, the high quality of the, the labels is really, really needed. I was going to print some um, that I'd seen, but I, I I don't think my... I've got a color laser, but I don't think my color laser would do it justice. I'd have to find some special paper or something. I'm not sure if lasers yeah. have... Color lasers have special paper. I assume I they still... You... They do. PBO Land, te he tested out a whole bunch of label paper and found one that he was happy with. But he has, like, a really expensive printer, too. Yeah, well, mine's not anything expensive. It's just a color mm -hmm. a color laser. Um, I mainly have... I did these, though, in 600 DPI, which is the big difference between my labels and other ones. So they should print out, like, really nice and crisp. Like, looking like an OEM label. So is he, gonna cut is he cutting them as well? Yeah, he cuts them... He does it by hand, but it looks die cut, really, the way that he does it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that's that's even, that's even better, better mm -hmm. again, because that's one of the things that you have to do. Um, yeah. Plus, that's the part a that sticky, I suck at. Having a sticky um, side as well is another thing. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are spray adhesives, but I'm not sure whether they would affect the actual. I've seen labels. people do it that way. Yeah. My old method was I would go to somewhere like Office Max or Office Depot, one of those office places and take in my own laser uh, label paper and have them print on that and then have them laminate it there. And then when uh, you cut yes. it out, the back actually peels off and that makes a nice glossy surface. Yeah. But you get bubbles, no matter like even, no matter how careful you are, you get a bubble in the lamination. So it's never as perfect as the way like somebody who prints it professionally does it that's, can get that's it. That's a common thing with, um, oh, as you've seen, of a, a lot of PGM carts is the labels do come off. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's something, or the, the, the corners fold or something like that. Like, they're really, really terrible for mm -hmm. the labels falling off. And, and you've got, like every the, time you open up the cart, you bend it just like a Neo Geo. Yeah. You yeah. damage the label no matter how careful you are. Yeah. No, it's it's... It's, it's a pain. I mean, there are a lot of cartridges. You go to buy the cartridge and there's no label. It's like, okay, well, what game is it? Um, you know, but it, yeah, it's, it's, if you're into, obviously, you know, not being a complete perfectionist, but if you want nice carts, it's nice to have a nice label. So it, it's good to have people designing labels um, for these carts because 
um, you know, you, you, your labels either they come off or they get folded or they look crappy so they need replacement. Or with the cave shooters, there was no labels for these. Mm -hmm. So you know people have to design something to actually use so um yeah it's, it's important and it's good to get some i think if you know if we can find more people to print them and and, and sell them and, and stuff i think more people will probably buy them and then you know that'll bring more interest into fluffy's pcbs and you know everybody's happy yeah i kind of uh a while ago i was making my own version of the neo geo hollow labels because i kept buying these crappy bootlegs or cheap games that were missing labels, like you said. Because you can get yeah. them. You know, like Metal Slug f 5 I got with no label. It was, not, it was dirt cheap back when I got it. and I, So I just had to design my own label for it. And I got yeah. Shock Troopers, Shock Troopers 2 that way. I ended up selling off a bunch of those because they're like worth a, their weight in gold lately. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've but, bought cuts before because it's it's not a problem if the game is something i've already got well then you know i can either use the cart shell or you know like i can you know give mm -hmm. one of the carts to a friend or something like it's, it's not a problem with um you know pgm carts that don't have labels because you know and it could be a version that i don't have that isn't dumped or or one that i haven't seen so it's it's um you know it can be a little bit exciting like that that was one thing i did a lot of the um Super Nintendo had in Japan a flash cartridge, an original flash cartridge made by Nintendo, um, which you could actually get games flashed onto. Um, the uh, special... Satellaview? Uh, no, that's the satellite one. Or, oh, uh, you're talking about the cart flash, service the, thing they yeah. had, yeah. Yeah, the flash cart. What uh, was that called? Uh, they were power cartridges, Nintendo power cartridges. Yeah, right? Nintendo Power. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what Buffalo Joe is really big into that, right? Yeah, I dumped... Um, uh, over 400 meg of um, cartridges. Oh yeah, you passed those on to me like a year ago, right? Yeah, it was a while ago, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So, um, and that's another thing like at the carts, they don't have anything written on them, you don't know what's in them until you dump them. Um, and, and you scanned cool. some really rare uh, manuals and things too for those. Yeah, I, I started to do one, I've never finished it just because it was over 200 pages. Um, so I scanned the first 50 pages, I think, and released that, and then I was going to do the rest, but um, I haven't really had a chance to do it, because uh, I'm doing it all with a, a flatbed scanner, so you have to, you know, scan the page, and then you got to turn the page to the next one, and scan, and, you know, it's, it, it gets a bit um, repetitious, and, and, and you know what I mean, like time-consuming, so I never finished yeah, it. Yeah, it was really interesting, though, to see yeah. Mario stuff, you know, that you've never seen before. Mario... And, yeah, uh, the art, you know, the magazine artwork. art, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the artwork that was in it, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that, yeah, that was really, really cool um, as well. But that's that's another, uh, there's a lot of different people who've been doing that now, more people are into it. Um, I, I heard the other day uh, that the, the satellite side um, of it, that service, that a, a new game had been found, and uh, I think someone made it work now, um, which, is, which is really, really cool. Um, the the pro biggest problem with the satellite stuff is a lot of stuff was broadcast for the game when you were playing it. Yeah, so and the then they lost the yeah, audio. The, or the data is yeah, it's not there anymore because the satellite doesn't exist. Um, that would be really cool if Nintendo would come out and release that data, um, yeah. just like how they've they've had some with the the Super yeah, NES. Yeah, on the Mini. Switch. Yeah. Yeah, on the Mini, they've done there are ROMs there that were never English, but they've done they've done an English. They should game. do that. Because yeah. people would, like, for Zelda, you know, lots of yeah, people well, would buy Zelda, that. There's a Zelda, yeah. the, I think there's two for the satellite mm -hmm. uh, that were released. But I, I, I'm not sure why um, Nintendo doesn't, um, because they've obviously still got all the files. Um, you know, like, they've, they've definitely got the, the files there, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, it's it's like other companies, I mean, other companies, let's say um, Electronic Arts, um, ECA, um they release a lot of their games after they're so like 10 years old or something they release the um the game for free you know like they, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they release the source code as well um so there are definitely companies out there um i think id software uh well sorry id software does that as well they release stuff um you know the, the definitely um, not nintendo <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, Sega for, doesn't when, either. For free. Um, doesn't really either. But um, but that stuff where you can never get the the data again because it's satellite only. Mm -hmm. um, that would be really cool because there'd be games there that 
well, they're not playable because they don't have sound or they don't have all the graphics data. Um, That's a really cool use of the MSU1 function of like SD2 SNES is to add back in the uh, live broadcast data to those uh, Teleview games. Yeah, it is, it, and it's that, it's actually quite interesting. The actual units, even though you can't use the units with a satellite anymore because the satellite's not there, they go for so much money. They are so expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though you can't do anything with it, um, which I'm, I'm not sure why. I mean, I know they weren't the user rate uh, or uptake of them wasn't huge. It wasn't what Nintendo really, really wanted, uh, and they they fell out a little bit with the um, satellite people. The what was it, Giga? Giga something was the satellite name. Um, mm -hmm. They fell out with them towards the end, and, and that's why the service really sort of got cancelled. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice if they would release that data. Like that would be so cool. We'd have games to play that you, know, you can't play, or, or or that are incomplete, and there's no music. And, and we all know how you know music's needed, needed for mm -hmm. playing games. Like that's you know. It just are you friends with Luigi Blood? Uh, I don't he does a lot of the uh, Satellaview stuff. He's in my Discord. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of people um, that I chat to on a on a regular basis just because of time time constraints. Um, but I, I think it's great how how people are, are definitely getting into it, and and maybe one day Nintendo will. They might do you know, maybe another mini or um, you know some sort of mini type device and. Yeah, you know, and release all these games in in, in, in English and, and with all their data. I, I think that would be really, really cool. Um, and especially because there are Zeldas, and we all know how mm -hmm. popular Zelda is. Really like, big games, you know, yeah. It's, it's huge. But um, it was like how they did the um, mini, I think, got an English version of um, Mario RPG, I think. I think the, the mini got that one. I think they did the English version, which, which was never released. Um, until the mini, so um, yeah. Oh, I think you're thinking of uh, Star Fox 2, maybe. No, I think they did Mario uh, RPG. Uh, I'm pretty sure they did that in English. They released that on the mini. Okay, oh, they I had might, that in English. I might be wrong, but I thought the Super Nintendo did actually have that. They had it on it on the mini. Um, anyway, that's probably something something to check. But I, I thought it did actually have it on the mini. But that's another game that wasn't released in English. Um, that was actually one of the games I ended up doing a lot of um, reproduction carts because there is a translation, a guy, um, a couple of people have done translation on it and that was one thing I did in the early days was um, building um, Mario RPG carts that were in English. Um, they were quite popular. I used to, I think, I think there is an English version but I think what, it was expensive so people used to convert it to English or something to save money. To get like the one dollar version of the Super Famicom cart. Is yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I didn't think it was ever released in English. Um, I didn't think I it, think was. it I think was. The other tricky thing that was, uh, it's an SA one, isn't it, from memory? As well. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that made it a problem as well because you need the SA one chip to run it as well. I'm just getting annihilated now. This is the this is definitely the shooter I need to uh, practice up at the most. Which is funny because I think people think Katsui is harder than this, but this is way harder than me. Woof! I'm gonna call it a day here. I'm just getting annihilated. Well, I think you've probably done a little bit better than me. Um, I'm sure I would have been dying quite a bit more. Oh, I don't know. Do I need. Do I don't. I have no chops at Dodon Pachi apparently. Diojo. Well, let's. Why don't we wrap this up? I would like to have you back on again and just to talk about uh, arcade stuff someday if you're free. Yeah. You no, know, you've been yeah, on quite no, a while now. Yeah, that's 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 totally cool. I'd love to be honoured to be able to come back and and talk about different stuff. Um, definitely, I'd, 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 it'd be really really cool. Um, I think it would go really really well. Yeah, and thank you so much for sending me this stuff, and I'm going to feature a lot of this again in individual streams, and uh, I'll keep... Maybe when you when the next package comes in from you, I can have you back on again to walk me through that. Yeah, well, that's... Because you said um, you've got some surprises in there. Yeah, a couple of weeks' time. Um, somewhere between, I think it's 14 to 17 days, somewhere around there. So, what, you know, two or three weeks is, you know, that's that's all totally good and fine. Yeah, it'll be awesome. All right, well, I'll let you go get back to your day now. It's really yep. late here, but it's like uh, mid-afternoon for you, so 
Yep. Thanks a lot for coming on. I really appreciate it. And thanks for uh, getting the word out about PGM and for supporting it so much like you do. Uh, it's you. just a great preservation project for a really great system. And it's, it's cool to be part of getting the word out on it. Cool. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks. Bye. All right. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in here. A huge thank you to Tim. Uh, GC8 Tech is what he goes by online, and GC8, GC8Tech.com is his site. And I have a bunch of links down in the comments to 1UP Arcade. And definitely watch that uh, walkthrough video. It's really cool of uh, the arcade there to see exactly what he's been up to for all these years. Really high quality cabinets, and it's great everything he's doing for the PGM. And I've been just jumping right into the PGM, and I'm going to do a lot of streams featuring individual games in the future. And uh, yeah, if you want to get one, you can get them as cheap as $35 to $50 for the motherboard and $50 bucks for a game. And you're talking a game with enough 2D power to overpower pretty much any console, any 2D console that you have ever come across. So this is a really cool system. And uh, yeah. This was a special stream, so I think I'll be back on Saturday for the official weekly stream, and thanks a lot, guys. A huge thank you to my patrons. Patrons at any level get an invite to the Smoke Monster Elite Discord, where you can hang out with people like me and Tim and all of the cool people from the chat. I'm sorry I fell behind on reading chat comments here, mainly because when you play shoot 'em ups and nudie puzzle games, it's hard to focus on anything except for the game, but um, yeah, I'll have the... Uh, you can read the chat comments and everything as the uh, the video goes in the rerun. But thanks a lot for joining, and I'll catch you guys on Saturday.